We couldn't pick three good Sean Connery movies, so I don't know what happened, dude. I don't know what happened. I'm so sorry. I I remember. No, I agree. I told her to th- it's, that. Uh, it's her fault. No, yeah. it's not. Yeah, the minute you guys chose oh. that, I was, I was <laughs> it's like, it's the oh, woman's man. fault. Yes, <laughs> she wanted the romance. So, it's her fault, dude. I love <laughs> Richard we'll Gere. <laughs> so. He's such a freaking like like <laughs> not even cute. No. He's like, got a good bullet. <laughs> the following podcast may contain adult language and an abundance of salt. So get your swords and shields ready and your Scottish accents because we're talking yeah. Sean Connery week. Welcome back to another episode of the Salty Nerd Podcast. I'm your host, the Salty Nerd, and today's episode, we're going to be honoring the life and legacy and career of the legendary Sir Sean Connery. In in three movies. With three movies that we thought were better than they are. (laughs) Salute. (laughs) Salute to Sean Connery. We miss you, buddy. Uh, Buddy. Buddy. Yeah, man. How dare you? Buddy. I didn't know you guys were so close. So tight. (laughs) Sir... Sean Sean Connery Connery. does not consider you a buddy. This is true. I don't miss him any more than I did last year. <gasps> You're so dark. I know. What's wrong with you? I really like, like your hoodie, though. He hasn't made a movie in like 20 years. Yeah, so. well, well, he's retired. Yeah, I know. Good for him. For anyway, good now. So the three movies that I were- miss him. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. I miss Sean Connery movies. You know, I miss Alex Trebek too. <sighs> yeah. Shuck it, Trebek. I I miss their camaraderie with each other. <laughs> in the SNL, did they were they really friends? I have no life? idea. I don't know. No, that was all just, was just a, a song, SNL, SNL skit. SNL skit? Okay. I'm looking forward to the uh, SNL skit coming up, though. I am joined by my co-hosts <laughs> of the podcast. Well, they're all dead and in heaven playing <laughs> Jeopardy. <laughs> that would be hell, actually. Probably, yeah, hell. <laughs> That'd be funny. Endless purgatory. Uh, the space barbarian. Space Viking barbarian. Oh, you got it right. What is it? That, what I, is I it? don't know. Whatever. Whatever. Space. Just space Viking barbarian. Yeah. How come I'm the only one who knows this? And yet I'm never on Twitter. Viking, I don't know. Viking space he, barbarian. He put it in his Twitter bio. He did. What's up, Matt? How you doing? I'm good. All right, good. You ready to talk about the Sean yeah, Connery man, movies? Let's do it. All right, cool. I'm also joined by the ambassador of estrogen and fiery redhead herself, Ju Juju. What's up? Kiss by fire. Kiss by fire. How's your? Is he asleep? Yeah. We have a new mascot, everybody. <laughs> we have a, a, a new pod pod. Yeah, it's a tiny little puppy that's adorable, and uh, it's curled up in. It's very cute. Uh, curled up in Jude's sweatshirt right now. I'm also joined by the uh, uh, author extraordinaire, Matthew Kadish. What's up, dude? Shuck at you, salty nerd. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. That was. Uh, hey, all right, I'm though. not known for my Shuck impressions. It. Shuck at salty nerd. <laughs> that wasn't very good. That wasn't good either. I got to get my voice the right tempo. Shuck at you, nerd. <laughs> you got to have, have a little bit of raspy. None yeah, of yeah. you. <laughs> None yeah. of you try. We'll listen Please. to that rock and roll. There, there you go. go. That's good. That's good. There it is. I got it. I got it. I got to get ready for it. Yeah. I got to get my voice adjusted. All right. Anyway, today's episode, we're going to be discussing three awesome Sean Connery movies. Uh, Dr. No, First Night, and The Hunt for Red October. And uh, this is going to be a good fun. So before we get into it, let's hear some quick words from our sponsors. Present you is burnt out at your current job, but future you works at Geico, and future you is also a beekeeper. Me? I don't even go outside. Well, with Geico, you got a consistent schedule, so you are now one with nature, my friend. So I've become a bee person? Technically an apiarist, and yes, you also got a competitive salary, so you had the funds to start a new hobby. All right, give me that honey. (laughs) Virginia Beach, start your future at Geico. We're hiring claim sales and service agents. Apply online today at geico.job slash Virginia Beach. The Home Depot's Holiday Gift Center has great gifts for any doer on your list and the best prices of the year just for you. On top-rated brands like DeWalt, RYOBI, Milwaukee, and Makita. Right now, the DeWalt Atomic Drill and Impact Combo Kit is just $149, normally $229. Order online for easy in-store pickup or delivery. The Holiday Gift Center, in-store and online. And Black Friday prices now through December. Gift giving improved. From the Home Depot, how doers get more done. U.S. only, Waspa's last C-store for details. That was abrupt, but okay. All right. Uh, oh, you just like really threw that in there. I did really. <laughs> popped into my head. I'm like, hey, oh, yeah. sponsors, guys. Sponsors. Yeah. Boom. I gotta, okay. I got to do this. He ended on an upswing. Yeah, yeah. he's going to end down on sponsors. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sponsors? I, 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 was, I was waiting for you to finish your sentence. <laughs> there was something that was supposed to come after it, but it just, it left. <laughs> Well, uh, He's never going to let us say it, though. Yeah. <laughs> and now, a word from our sponsors. Would you guys like you to do it? You can do it. it. I'll make you do it next time. 
Let's, do, let's pay make, some bills, Alex. There you go. Yeah, make them do it now. Vader, why don't you do the pitch for the Salty Club? <laughs> the what? The Salty, salty Club. Oh, ba- oh, is that the Vader Patreon? just had a panic attack. <laughs> uh, hey, guys. Uh, Patreon. Do it. <laughs> Five bucks. Get some stuff. <laughs> we, we do a show you can listen to. Only you. <laughs> right? Is that good? Where can I go? <laughs> uh SaltyNerdClub.com. Yeah, that's very it. good. Very good. I need more Baileys. Yeah. <laughs> you did well for your first time. I'm sold. Yeah. <laughs> if that doesn't get you to go to SaltyNerdClub.com. Yeah, there's pictures and, and, and more pictures and drunkenness. Yep. And um, uh, there's a bloopers. Bloopers yeah. and Patreon exclusive podcasts mm-hmm. where we uh, get even saltier. Yeah. Yeah. Vader really likes this on the it's Patreon. A, only. It's my best work, personally, <laughs> because Salty cuts out literally everything I say for the main show and this puts it on there. It's not true. Where three people get to listen to me every week. Mm. So that's fine. <sighs> you good? Okay, yeah, I'm good. All right, cool. That's saltynerdclub.com, drink, everybody. Drink, drink. Thanks. <laughs> All right. First movie we're going to be talking about is uh, First Night, I think, right? Is that what we agreed on? Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. K-N-I-G-H-T. Sean Connery as yes. King Arthur. Terrible. Camelot. It was Awful. Richard Gere as uh, Lancelot, who uh, comes in and steals his lady, mm-hmm. Guinevere, Lady Guinevere. Well, I can't remember. What's the actress's name? I can't remember her Julia name. Julia Ormond. Ormond. Julia Ormond. Yeah, did we ever see her in anything again? I, this? this is the only she, movie. Wasn't she in A River Runs Through It with Brad Pitt? I don't know. I've never seen that movie. She was in like a lot of stuff in the 90s and then she just kind of disappeared. She's mm. beautiful. Oh, yeah. She's very pretty. Yeah. Um, yeah so I'm kind of, eh, whatever. I don't think she's up to Guinevere standards. <laughs> Not at all. Did this you was know a, her? Yeah. I, we used to hang out. Yeah. Back at in that, Hollywood. At that coffee back, shop. Back in Camelot. Back yeah. in Camelot. <laughs> <laughs> I can think of a few actresses I would have liked better. Like? Um, like Tom Cruise's ex-wife. What's her name? Nicole Penelope Kidman. Cruz? Yeah, Nicole Kidman. Oh, Nicole Kidman. She would have been cool. For Guinevere? Hell yeah. Mm. Redhead. I liked Smoking Kira Knightley on. as like the barbarian Guinevere and uh, that one with Clive Owen. That was, I, I'm I like, trying to think of like at the time who, sorry. Was, who was popular at the time. I don't time. know. Anyway, first night. So Jude, do you have uh, the synopsis ready? It's pretty. Yeah. yeah okay. Go La- ahead. Lancelot. Uh, first night from 1995. Lancelot falls in love with Guinevere, who is due to be married to King Arthur. And meanwhile, there's a violent warlord who tries to seize power from Arthur and his knights of the round table. Right. So I'll just get right into this. I freaking loved this movie when I was a kid. Me too. I watched it all the time. Me and my dad would sit down like, oh, I want to watch like First Like we night. were yeah. both excited to rewatch this yeah. when we picked these movies. I was super yeah, I had, when, when you two picked it, I, my eyes just rolled. I had this. Upon I, I, rewatch, I, I was like, oh this movie man. Was. I, re- I just remember it, it doesn't hold up. being so much fun. Yeah. And I, I, I must have put it on I this pedestal. It. Because I haven't watched it in years. Do you want to know about the money? Sure. Okay. How much did it cost? It cost fifty-five million to. That's make. it. Yeah. That's not bad. Well, that was all for Sean Connery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they actually only made this for five million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> uh, domestically, it made thirty-seven. Ooh. Thirty-seven million. What do you think it made worldwide? Uh, worldwide, Mark. If it made thirty-five million domestically, Sean Connery's a pretty big star, so I'm going to say it made it doubled it. It doubled the money. Sixty-something million. Sixty-five million. Oh, it doubled the domestic. Yeah. Okay. It cost 55. You say it made 60. 65. 65 worldwide. What do you say? 69, Vader? Trebek. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it did a little better, a little bit better than that. Worldwide, it made 127. Nice. Okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. That, that was the strength of Sean Connery is he was a big overseas draw. So if you had him in your movie, you could expect to make a lot of money yeah. worldwide. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, I like as King Arthur, like my complaint is not with Sean Connery whatsoever. As King Arthur, he has this like grandiose vibe to him and he, he you know controls the scene i believed it yeah i'm like yeah that looks like a guy I who could be king richard gear in this though oh I he's really sleazy hate him. he's so sleazy yeah. name a richard gear movie that you actually like him in chicago pretty woman <laughs> i don't know i need to watch it again touche i have <laughs> pretty woman's pretty good <laughs> well you don't like chicago he's good in chicago i i didn't like the play i've never seen the movie oh the movie's really good i love the play I never seen a play, yeah, but you, I really you guys also movie. liked First Night. So I, you know what? <laughs> Rose colored glasses, man. Rose colored glasses. Like when I watched this movie, I remember as a kid just being super excited because it's like Knights of the Round Table and sword fighting and all this cool you're, you're, stuff. I'm really upset right now. Uh, <laughs> give me a minute. <laughs> you, got, you got me and Kadish on the same team today. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> That's yeah, not good. That, Hell that never froze happens. over. <laughs> but like. 
like Guinevere and Sean Connery's King Arthur, like I felt like that worked really well. I felt like he controlled the scenes that he was in. He felt very King Knightly, you know, I, I thought he worked as King Arthur. And uh, I, I thought the age disparity was a little weird, but it was, you know, medieval I mean, times. So I mean, one of the worst parts about that quote unquote love story is like every time they were trying to build the romance between Guinevere and King Arthur, he'd always be telling stories about when he was hanging out with her dad. Yeah. When she was like four. <laughs> you know? Super creepy. Yeah. He's like, I remember when you ran into that field. <laughs> do you remember when, when you were two? Do you remember, remember when I got this cut? Yeah. It bled like a war wound. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I wiped it off with my sleeve. Yeah. yeah super weird. Super weird have, love story. I still have that stain on my dress. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Cause they didn't like outright say how long ago that was. Cause it, they didn't say when her father I, I died. Mean, it's at least like a 20 year gap. Between you think them. 20 years? Oh, yeah. At least. At least. Oh, I was thinking like maybe like 10. Like she was a teenager and he showed up as like a 60 year old man. <laughs> well, she still, she might have been a teenager, but that doesn't mean he wasn't 50 at the yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. It's a weird, it's a weird gap, but it was medieval times. Like that didn't happen. Come on. Be real. He's been waiting for the right woman. Exactly. He's been holding, he's been holding off. Anyway, uh. I know you were disappointed, Vader, so why don't you tell me what, what's it's wrong just, with it? It's just a super weird, boring, long movie. I think uh, we all with, agree with terri- on that terrible, now. With terrible action sets and boring dialogue. and oh, was, the it was, costumes. It was bad. Oh, and, and the stupid shoulder pad. Dude, when I was... It, I, 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 thought, I thought I was... <laughs> they got a bunch of extras or something from the Excalibur show down here on the strip. <laughs> It was bad. That's, no, I you think, know what, man? That's fair. I've been That's very no. Fair. Hold on, because I've been to the Excalibur event in the in the. It was the probably casino. better. It, that that's better. Yeah. That yeah. shit is dope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the costumes are legit. Like this movie, yeah, and and so so the the, the sword fighting. Yeah, the, the sword fighting is yeah. really good too. But like this movie, I remember when I was a kid. This movie just like I thought the costumes were so badass. I was like, oh yeah, yeah. they got the freaking cool armor with the blue sash. Because kids and, are dumb. Yeah, kids are dumb. <laughs> Thank you. If you want, if you Thank want you. cool armor with King King Arthur, you, you go watch Excalibur. Yeah, the actual movie. Yeah, I get yeah, you. So. I get you. I, I I realize that now. Watching it now, I don't, maybe it's Shadowversity. Maybe they ruined it for me because that oh, dude like breaks down medieval stuff. And so I'm a little bit more educated on what's like realistic, quote unquote, and what actually happened in history. So when I watch this movie, I'm like, that is so fake. Even, even that rubber suit that Maligant had on. When yeah. You, you showed up with the spikes with the on. Spikes on. <laughs> Like a, is that a leather man? trench coat? Yeah, is this, <laughs> Looks like it went to Hot Topic. And look just, out! I got my shoulder pad. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to protect my entire body. Matt um, has something very personal yeah. against one particular item of oh. costume costumery. Kate. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> so yeah, like at the beginning of the movie when um, Guinevere is like in her home and she's got like her little entourage and and they report about the village that got attacked. Uh-huh. Like one of her like. I guess advisors is wearing like a legit hoodie with like a drawstring on the hood. <laughs> like, it looks like something they they went down to Walmart and bought for the movie. <laughs> with like one, yeah, with one of these strings on it. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's got a flugel binder on it and yeah, everything. It, it had like a drawstring for the hoodie. I'm, I'm like, were those even invented? Yet? Like, 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 who thought of that? Who thought that would be a good idea to this know. movie? And it was like bright yellow, the hood and stuff like that. It looked like uh, something from the Nike store. Yeah this this movie. The cost, at least the costumes. This came out before people were like hypercritical of what medieval costumes like should look like. Hella grommets, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like super clean. Oh, very clean. Very yeah. clean. Like this whole movie's way too clean. Yeah, I would rather watch. Well, Maligan. You know, Arthur's wearing like a, one of the <laughs> one one of the velour tracksuits that Vader wants. Was in he? like three scenes? I don't He's remember wearing that. Like a purple I, I, velour king suit. Hmm. I wouldn't go to the medieval fair. Up at Sunset Park in any of those outfits. You know yeah, what though? Same. I would not. They're they're ridiculous. They're they're ridiculous. I still think they're cool looking. Just knowing that they don't fit the era, it, it makes it, it stand it reminded out. Reminded me more. like if uh, Captain Kirk and Spock beamed down to medieval planet, <laughs> and they were just wearing they whatever were just they wearing thought. Whatever this stuff was, Whoa, they got yeah. this. They must have watched uh, this King Arthur movie from Earth two hundred years ago. And, <laughs> So let's talk about a little bit more about the love story because when I, again when I was a kid maybe it's just because I wasn't noted I didn't pay enough attention to it. But can I just tell oh. the audience what the movie is like about? Set the stage before we didn't get into the, we didn't do that. Uh, not tonight. do you want to do you want to take over? Get into it. I know, but do you want to take over uh, for I, I, her? No, I I just want to lay down like, <laughs> what what the basic plot of the movie is for people who haven't seen it. Well, okay, Lancelot tries to rape uh, Guinevere <laughs> and she's into it and therefore they're in love. <laughs> 
That's <laughs> but she's pretty supposed much to marry pretty... Arthur. Yeah. Yeah, she's no, not wrong. So so this movie it's it's based off of the original Lancelot uh, story uh Lancelot Knight of the Cart. Mm-hmm. And it was the first story that Lancelot was introduced in and it's basically about um this uh rival prince named Maligant who uh used to be a member of the Knights of the Round Table and after Arthur had kind of like solidified his kingdom, uh, Maligant kind of broke off and went to the um created his own kingdom on like the outskirts of Camelot. And he starts raiding these uh, border towns, uh, trying to uh, provoke a war with, uh, with Camelot because he wants to take down Arthur. And so Guinevere's kingdom, like she's the daughter of a, of a King who recently died. And so like, she's kind of inherited his, his, uh, you know, border kingdom and Malagant keeps, you know, trying, trying to invade it and take it over. And so she agrees to a political marriage with uh, King Arthur in order to help protect her land. And on on the way to Camelot to meet King Arthur to marry him, uh, she gets ambushed by Maligant's forces. And so, like, there's this big battle. And during the battle, uh, her carriage basically gets hijacked. Yeah. And um, Lancelot, who's like, like a wanderer, he's not a knight. He's just like the cell sword who's like really good at, at fighting. He sees this happen, and so he goes and he rescues her, and he's, like, very taken with her beauty, and so he starts, like, putting the moves on her. Hardcore. Hardcore. <laughs> and, uh, you know, she's a prim- like, I'm going to put my tongue in your mouth, and you're going to like it, and yeah. then you're going to beg me for it. Yeah. She's like, no. She kept saying no to him, and he just was like, he's like no, mm, you're going to. You're, you're going to want it. It was super yeah. weird. He basically yeah. me-toos her. He like, does. Times. It was very Several weird. Times. Like, I'm not really, this like. This movie should be canceled. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't really subscribe to the whole, like, everything is terrible <laughs> and everything is sexist, but, like. This dude was like a little f- too forward. Mm-hmm. Like it was weird. I was was it, was it his uh, awesome sword fighting style? No, no, no. And he's like, "Hey, uh, Richard Gere, do you actually like go to sword fighting school no. for this?" No. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, "Okay, well, I'm just going to like do this thing and you're going to make it look cool, right?" Yeah. Like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> but uh, ba- basically, so he saves Guinevere's life and she's kind of into him, but he sends her off to um, Camelot and she meets with King Arthur and she kind of says, you know, like, Oh, I'll grow to love you. And like, you know, I really appreciate you. And like, I want to get married. And so King Arthur's like, yes. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, and like, while, while she's at Camelot, um, Lancelot just through a series of events makes his way there. A series of events? You're missing the gauntlet, man. Well, this well, was my favorite part well, of the movie. Well, like, he he makes his way there. Yeah, he's already, oh, he's oh. already in Camelot. Well, he has, when that he has happens. to rescue the yeah. white horse. That's oh, yes, yeah. yes. And, and we'll, we'll get back to the, the gauntlet in a second. But he has to run this ridiculous gauntlet in order to, <laughs> to win a kiss from the queen. Yes. And uh, he's the only guy to successfully run this gauntlet. So well, he's the only guy to run the gauntlet. Yeah, he's ever no nobody's well, ever been able to do it after the kiss thing. Is well, he, he he's the only one to complete the gauntlet. <laughs> no. others, others have tried. They they're out there trying, and then Guinevere shows up, and they go, "Who wants to win a kiss from the king?" And he like, <laughs> from "Well, I'm going to get up there, whatever." But still, you know, he like from gets Sean up there Connery. and he does it, and he's yeah. like, "I'm the only one." Yeah, and the, the guy, me, baby. Yeah, the big announcer guy is like, yeah. "Guinevere, will you give the winner yeah. a kiss?" And and Sean's like, "What did he just say?" <laughs> <laughs> and and so Lancelot. Um, you know, like but when they had last met, he'd say, like, I'm only going to kiss you if you ask for it. And so when he gets up to collect his prize, he's just like, ask me. And she's like, no. <laughs> and so he, he's like, uh, you know, he does a diplomatic thing where he basically just gets on his knees and says, like, you know, she's too beautiful. For I me dare to kiss. not kiss yes. such so, a lady. Yeah. Such fair a lady. <laughs> yeah. and, and so he just kisses her hand. And this impresses <laughs> Arthur. And so Arthur kind of takes him aside. Arthur, and, and, you fool. And kind of, kind of like inspires him with his uh, kingly talk. Yeah. And uh, then, because clearly he just made it through that gauntlet. He's got mad skills. Bro. Listen, yeah. that I wanted to talk about that because, like, King Arthur is way too enamored with this dude. Like, he does things that don't deserve as much praise King, as he's getting. King Arthur wants to marry Lancelot. It's Lancelot, weird, but King Lancelot Ar- doesn't have any like land. So. <laughs> King Arthur's like, oh, this guy just went through the American Ninja course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in love. Yeah, I, I, I do think we have to stop and just talk about how ridiculous this. Uh, the gauntlet, gauntlet oh yeah. i love the gauntlet scene it's so much fun Ugh. it's like first we get we get a scene where i think what two maybe three people who are like all padded up they try to go through it because they want to go have a drink because the original bet is if you get through the gauntlet you get to go and have a drink with the king you can go sit at his table and like he'll treat you like his brother blah 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 blah. so you get all padded up and you get on this gauntlet and like and then you go die and then you die <laughs> <laughs> or fall into the hay and you bales. fall into the hay bales it, it, it is the most technical 
technologically advanced thing in all the land. Oh man, it's got like gauntlet. yeah, it's got gears. How is it powered? Did they ever say how it was powered? They there's, probably there's, cranked it up. There's, there's, some, just, rabbits, yeah, go, <laughs> there's some rabbits on the wheel. <laughs> it just they just literally flip an on switch and this big wooden contraption just starts spinning. Yeah, but, but it, it's like this big long raised platform, and the first part of the gauntlet is just like these things that swing around and try to knock you off. But then it's, the second it's the part, lasers out of entrapment. Yeah, the second part of the gauntlet is literally like a death machine. They, got, like, they, they have like made like long sword blades jutting up from the floor to stab you in the dick and, sword. And, and then they got like these these like pendulums that are like swinging with like the axes the, on yeah, them and yeah like, like, like it's literally like like i saw the padding that the first guys were that that wouldn't have saved them no no it's, that, it's that basically for for our new audience it's basically uh one of the first parts of fall guys yeah <laughs> for our younger audience for our younger audience yeah. if you know, if you play the gauntlets on fall guys you know exactly what this the, thing the is. video game fall yeah, the video yeah. game yes <laughs> Yeah, you're right, though. It is that. But I just like I remember when I was a kid, again, I thought that was the coolest freaking thing in the world. I'm like, oh, that's such a cool gauntlet. And Lancelot's the only one who can do it because I'm going to go build one in my backyard. <laughs> he's the most skilled. And I looked at it to, like nowadays I look back at it. I'm like, wow, that is like super cheesy. And there's no reason why nobody else could win that. It's yeah. like all you got to do is get the timing down and you can just count. walk right just, through it. Just count. Just count. <laughs> yeah. Basically, at the beginning of the movie, Lancelot kind of reveals that like you know, you have to not be afraid of death if you want to be the best warrior. And so everything he does, it's just because like he doesn't care if he lives or dies. Yeah. And, and that's what makes him better than pretty much anyone else in the land. He's like super depressed. <laughs> that was a big character reveal later on. Well, he, he had some like trauma in his youth. But yeah. but regardless, so like Maligant, you know, kidnaps Guinevere again and Lancelot has to go and save her. And so then they have another opportunity to have their like tortured romance. <laughs> and uh uh, basically, uh, once he gets Guinevere back to King Arthur, Maligant has taken over Guinevere's land. So King Arthur uh, raises his armies and goes to fight Maligant and, to, to get back Guinevere's kingdom. Yeah. And because Lancelot went and rescued Guinevere when nobody else could yeah. or didn't uh, or they couldn't find out where she was, like he went and did the job. So King Arthur, in return, as a, as like a thank you, knighted him as a knight of the round table mm -hmm. against the wishes of all the other knights in the room. And Guinevere. <laughs> and Guinevere. Like, and, and it was but the fact. Sir, we don't know who this guy is. <laughs> He's a drifter. He sells his soul. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the fact that Guinevere didn't want him around that made him be like, oh, well, I'm going to stay. Yeah, it's like another reason why this dude's super creepy it in this sucks. movie. Yeah. Yeah, but he you always he, want what you can't have, right? <laughs> I guess. He, he's kind of inspired by Arthur's kind of chivalry, like his his optimism and, and this idea of Camelot where, you know, everyone's equal at the round table and stuff like that. And so, like, he's very conflicted between, like, his love of the ideals that Arthur is espousing and uh, Guinevere. And so after they retake Guinevere's kingdom in like a very long and boring battle scene. Um, There's nobody in the village. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Classic trick. Or no, we're going to, we're going to put our camp over there. Yeah. <laughs> but Sire, <laughs> but nobody's going to be in it. It's too exposed. And he's like, he just looks at him. Just Sean Connery just gives you that look and you're like, oh, sorry. All right. Yeah, Doesn't she go with with them yes. yeah, for the she's, yeah she's in the battle yeah, everybody well, everybody in the kingdom goes to the battle yeah for some reason for some reason his wife goes with him to, <laughs> well it's her land it's her land come on yeah guys. but i mean like in, in that time women would not have been on the front lines uh, she wouldn't Witcher. have retained ownership of that land <laughs> That's is enough. her dad's dead well i don't know mm. Is uh, there a, no, she she would have inherited because she was the next in line. But th that's but why she's they had, a woman. Yeah, but there's queens women, back then. Yeah, women inherited land back then. That's why they had to have marriages. Yeah, and this land and time that never really existed. <laughs> <laughs> this super <laughs> fake movie. Well, well yeah. I mean, like in 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 the feudal system, it yeah. was basically like if if there were no male heirs, the property would be inherited by the the female heir. But she wouldn't be allowed to rule it. Basically, she had to marry in order to to do that there but, it is. but but there but there were <laughs> there were some exceptions to that so. yeah yeah but but, but anyway. yeah like regardless so basically uh after they retake the kingdom of of guinevere's lancelot decides he's going to leave but before he goes like him and her like have like this little meeting and she professes her love and she agrees to kiss him so they have the most passionate kiss ever filmed on screen it's a hard kiss I mean, she basically begs for it at that point yeah and, and he just like Tries to swallow her. This, yeah. yeah, his tongue <laughs> Dude. is so aggressive. This is very much a eighties. This is why people close their eyes while they kiss. It's a very strong kiss. <laughs> it was like punched her in the face kind of a kiss. Mm -hmm. It was weird, but it was a porn kiss, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but I just thought it was like looking back at, on it now or watching it now. I'm like, this is super undeserved. 
Like the relationship that they had, it didn't feel like they made it reasonable enough for the audience to believe it. Like there was no, there was like one or two instances where they get together, but I never felt like there was a connection between those two. Well, this was made in a time where a man could just decide he liked someone <laughs> and the audience would believe that they would eventually get together and the work like didn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Way back when. <laughs> yeah, way back when. Back in way the back, olden days. <laughs> way back when. And so at, at the point where he rescues her for like the 18th time. Oh, Richard Gere. That, that means that their relationship is deserved at that point. I, uh, I guess. Yeah, and so like while they're having this terrible kiss, Sean Connery uh, enters the room <laughs> and sees it. Best no. freaking transmission. Or what's the yeah. word for uh, transition? Transition ever. You get Sean Connery looking up with his angry eye, and then his angry eye turns into a ball of fire. <sighs> I was goes, like, then he goes, yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> why? No, he says why. Whatever. <laughs> it was terrible. He sits in church and, and asks God yeah. why. His my, my wife turned around and looked at me, and she goes, "Why are we watching this stupid movie?" <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was like, "I don't know." Jude picked it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and after after the betrayal is revealed, basically he decides to have a public uh, hearing to yeah. to try uh, Lancelot for treason. And so during the and hearing, also Guinevere and Guinevere open yeah. the gate. I want everybody there. <laughs> and, 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 and so while they're having, I want them to see what a whore you are. <laughs> while, while they're having the, the, this trial, Lancelot comes down and, and he's like, "She's innocent. It was all my fault. Take my life. Spare her." <laughs> oh, the whole thing too. They're in this so big true. open square, and he's like, "I want this to be public or whatever." And and Lancelot's like, "What I have to say is for the king alone." Yeah. I'm like, bro. <laughs> Kind of defeated the purpose here. Yeah, you're still a dick. Yeah, a lot. yeah exactly. But you're a rapey dick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but Arthur is so Nailed impressed it. with uh, with Lancelot's sacrifice that you can tell he's having a change of heart. And just as he's about to speak to you know, pass sentence, <laughs> Maligan's army uh, appears out of nowhere. Yep. And uh, takes well, they over, open the gates. Take, takes over the the, the court, and Maligan basically comes in and says like. You know, you'll this is mine now. Yeah, this is mine now. You'll, you'll hand over <laughs> control of and Camelot I think, to me. And I think half of them were already there anyway because he invited the entire kingdom in yeah. for the trial. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so uh, um, King Arthur basically says like, you know, fight. Well, hold on. Oh, you're messing the whole thing up, bro. Because this, <laughs> this is legit my favorite part of the movie. Because he's surrounded. He's, his whole army's there. Like uh, Maligan's like, I'm going to burn your city to the ground if you refuse to kneel. Like bend the knee to me. I am the king now. Or I'm going to kill everybody, basically. This is the last thing I do. Yeah, this is. <laughs> That's good. That's better than your impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> this is my last act as your king. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I want you all now to fight and it was like he stands up yeah, and throws his sword in the air never surrender come not lives like never I'll, forget never forget <laughs> never surrender <laughs> by grab Thor's hammer <laughs> save Camelot and he yeah. immediately gets two uh, um, <laughs> three crossbow, crossbow yeah. bolts to the yeah. chest gets shot right away which he knew he knew that was gonna yeah. happen he's like I'm the first one who's gonna die and but so he inspires all the peasants and the knights in attendance to start rising up against Maligan's army. hell yeah yeah and, and, and terribly and choreographed. If we've learned anything from fights. Patrick Swayze week, you never underestimate your opponent. Right. Yeah. You take it outside. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> just outside. be nice. Yeah, you got to be nice. So <laughs> uh, Lancelot, basically, once Arthur falls, he's the one who takes up the sword against Maligant. And they have. I uh, like this fight scene. They have, I know uh, it's corny and it's not great compared in today's standards, but I still enjoy it. I still like watching There's it. There's nothing to enjoy. It's it's got the music and they're like separating. The music the, isn't even. They're awesome. separating the, the crowd. Music was you so are so annoying. steadfast in your loyalty <laughs> yeah. to the things Dude, that you movie, liked when you were dumb. Look, there's very few things about this movie I still like, but this was one of them. This movie. <laughs> Fucking sucks, dude. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't even understand. Yeah. Your, you woke the puppy up. Your 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 loyalty to this. Thing. I just there's a it couple of things. There's this, just a couple of things I like. This entire scene, like when I was rewatching it, the music. It's just like this. Th this steady metronome and then like people <laughs> chanting dominus 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 it's got like an opera like, choir it also works for a horror movie yeah <laughs> but, but like i was listening to it i was like oh my god the music is terrible it's got the, it's got this like weird like operatic like choir of like dominating dun, 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 dun. and they're bad. just like they're separating the crowd they're going after each other they're fighting and then of course lancelot has to like help a peasant who's gonna die and that distracts him long enough for maligan to get the upper hand like it's I don't know. I had stuff fun. Then he does his fancy. <laughs> oh, his fancy. His, his, his Lancelot. His quick sword. <laughs> thing. And it's just like. Yeah. So, so yeah, that, but that, that part where, he, where, where him, him and Maligan are, are having that light, lightning fast sword exchange. Yeah. 
the blades were all CGI. Like they, they didn't actually have blades <laughs> to do that. That's so bad. Um, that, it, that because, because they weren't able to physically go that fast. <laughs> And so, like, they had to basically have, like, the, the hilts of the sword in their hands, and they were just doing, you know, you, you, like, You know what around. I see, right? I see me and my brother <laughs> when we're seven years old fighting each other with sticks. Mm-hmm. That's how they fight. Yeah. I'm not joking. No, you're not joking That's at exactly all. exactly what it looks like. That's how it is. And then he does this epic, like, sword spinny, yeah. cuts his throat. But they don't show it because it's yeah. PG. <laughs> yeah. Well, well they, they show the animated blood fly Wait, wait, off. whoa. <laughs> Is that the problem with this movie? <laughs> is it PG? Is that why? Oh, it, I was joking. I don't know what rating it is. What was this rating? Oh, I think I'm, it was PG thirteen. Let me see. That's probably third. Yeah, might have been PG. You think so? Yeah. Jude, find out for us. But anyway, I still. I think it's just Put a my. On it. I think it's just my nostalgia, but I still do enjoy that because it's like Lancelot. PG-13. Huh? PG thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. Still. By the way, every movie we watched this week was so fucking long. <laughs> Everything was over two hours. It it's was true. crazy. Yeah. While we were watching this, like I turned to Judah, I was like, I can't believe how long this movie feels. <laughs> we took well, like two breaks during it, and I was like, Ah, oh, shit. We still have like an hour and forty five minutes left to go. This is a thing that I wish they would have done now. Looking back, like I really wish they would have spent more time with King Arthur and his knights. Like, I wish they hadn't made King Arthur such a pussy through the whole movie. <laughs> he was trying to be nice. <laughs> He's just in church praying while Lancelot gets all the good digs in. Yeah. Boning. So, I just, um, cause we, did you guys recognize some of the, yeah. some of the knights? We got uh, the Onion Knight from Game yeah. of Thrones. He was like his, his, yeah, his number one man. I, I had to point that out to Judah. I was like, is that Sir David? It sure like, is. No. That's what I'm saying. Like, I wish they would have spent more time with his knights. Like, I want to get to know all these guys because they, they give, didn't even get names. I know. They, I think they mentioned it in passing who like one or two of like, them. Artemis or yeah, Arta- something Arta- Kit- Artemicus or something. <laughs> something like that. Something. He says it he says it once, I think, when they were doing like the wedding Agravain. march. And then uh and then he te- he says the other guy's name while they're uh, on the battlefield uh over uh Leoness at some point in time when they're talking about setting up the camp. But like at the end of the movie in the big fight scene, each one of the knights that we see gets like a little moment of like them fighting for to save Camelot, and I'm like, I wish they would have set up a little bit more about who yeah, they were. Yeah, why should I care about like, these people? Like, who do I care? Well, yeah, yeah. exactly. So you I think- You only need to care about Lancelot. They should have cut the whole nonsense out with uh, with him going off and rescuing Guinevere. Like, there was like long sequences of them riding horses and stuff. Honestly, like, if they had cut out the whole like, <laughs> romance between him and Guinevere, this movie would have been more enjoyable. Yeah. Well, this this movie, <laughs> so originally it was supposed to be directed by Terrence Young, who was the guy who directed Dr. No and a lot of Connery's um, mm. James Bond movies. Mm. But he died- in pre-production and so like they were lucky they replaced the director of this movie with what did he die of i think just a heart attack or something like that Uh. old age maybe but uh uh, they replaced him with director jerry zucker who um if if you don't know he's part of the zucker brothers who did like airplane and top top secret what but but (laughs) jerry zucker just came off of uh ghost Uh, he had won an academy award for directing ghost and um and so like with this the was sways? with with the sways yes <laughs> and uh and so basically like this was his follow up to ghost and he wanted you know ghost was a big romance type thing so he wanted to kind of carry that uh in, into this movie with like you know like oh let's make this like romantic you know and uh, mel gibson was originally attached to play lancelot but he, well, he decided better. to go off and do braveheart instead i don't know good choice good yeah choice. good yeah good yeah. choice good but choice. yeah he Rich. made the right choice and Kath- i don't know that that would have saved Catherine zeta jones was actually supposed to play guinevere but they couldn't figure out how to make her ethnicity uh play <laughs> in, in the movie that wouldn't matter wasn't, nowadays wasn't she uh in that Robin Hood movie? No, she was in uh, Zorro. Zorro is a freaking badass. Oh, movie. oh yeah, okay. Oh, love that movie. I like Zorro. Yeah. This, I mean, I says, think I do. I don't know. Well, I, I haven't wa- watched it for a while. I just rewatched I'm, I'm it. I'm questioning everything <laughs> about what I like now. She's, she's I'm like, uh, are my favorite movies actually my favorite movies now? Yeah, yeah. This one made me question that too. Like, yeah. I have and, such and, rosy memories of this movie, and yeah. I'm like, I'm watching this. The now, original like, cut of this movie was three hours long. <sighs> oh fuck, no. no. <laughs> And I, I was telling Jude that, like, I have, like, a special place in my heart for, like, how much I hate this movie. <laughs> because uh, back in 95, my first job in high school was at a movie theater. Mm. And so when, the, <laughs> when this movie came out, like, I would have to, like, go in and, and like, you know, check the theater whenever, like, this movie was playing. And I, I've seen this movie way more times than I ever cared to. And I never and it liked. it wore you down. I like never, sandpaper. Yeah, I never liked Richard Gere. I've, I've never been a big fan of his. And I didn't like Julia Ormond in this movie. And I always felt like this movie was just far too clean. Like, like it just didn't, it, like it, it didn't look yeah. good no. to me. And so, um, like, I've never 
you, you know, like when you guys suggested this, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to. Don't, don't say you guys. <laughs> this is, was there was Jude. no guys. Yeah, well, you I, were on board with it. I was not. It. I just didn't say nothing. <laughs> Have you seen this before? Yeah. Well, okay. I'm looking at Richard Gere movies right now because I'm like, what? Have I ever liked him? Well, he was getting Pretty Woman. I'll give him that. But but like I he, think I still like Pretty you, Woman. You know, I don't know. You know what was funny is is like during the time this movie came out, like like there were so many like tabloid stories about him and Cindy Crawford. And, uh, you know they they were married. Yeah. And so oh like, god, I forgot about that. And so like there were all these rumors about like trouble in, in their their marriage, and he and he kept saying like, oh no, that's just rumors. And they put out like this big like press release um, about like how ooh unfaithful that movie's awesome. I think. They, they put out this big press relief about how solid their marriage is. And then as soon as this movie came out, they got divorced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. I got, I got some nostalgia for this movie, so it must be it's a bad movie. A bit, right. I'm a little bit biased. Here's but. a movie. I think I like runaway bride. Oh, I like that movie. That's a it terrible now. movie. Oh, no, I love runaway I'm bride. I'm going to rewatch runaway it now bad. because we, I think I probably hate it. When you guys, to, when you guys do your chick flick podcast, <laughs> you can talk about it. Jude, me and you need to watch that together. Cause I also love that movie and I'm, a, right, I'm worried. Well, I'm worried that it's, are you doing it today? That's another <laughs> terrible today. movie. <laughs> okay. All right, let's do you guys. Well, uh, I wanted to point out to Vader real quick. Did, didn't you think, uh, that the Camelot in this movie looked a lot like Stormwind? From World of Warcraft, I think Stormwind looks a lot like. <laughs> well, for I mean, sure. I mean, like, like this predated, uh, um, you know, World of Warcraft, and so like when, when I was looking at the the you know fake city of, of Camelot, yeah, like, like it's all these like white buildings with like the blue, you know, yeah, it's very probably moves. why I play a horde, <laughs> <laughs> so you can go and ruin that place because you think about it the, the, with the blues and everything, yeah. yeah, it's very much. Very, very World of Warcraft. Yeah, it feels like World of Warcraft really kind of pulled from Arthurian. I didn't notice that, but I don't. But really if you want to watch again. a good King Arthur movie, go watch that one where they're all Roman knights. What's that one with the uh, Clive Owen? Clive Owen, yeah, um, that one's pretty good. I like that one too. Yeah, it's what was still that, not. It's what was not that good. called? Arthur? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah it's just yeah, Arthur. It's King Arthur. King Arthur. Yeah. yeah, I also like that movie. But maybe if I go back and watch it now, I'm going to be like, No, oh, I just watched awful. that a couple weeks ago. <clears throat> Did you? It's good. Yeah. Okay. It's not. It's anyway, not so let's it's, let's it's do better than this movie. Let's Way do, better than this movie. Let's do some final thoughts and then give this a rating. Uh, Vader, you you got some serious salt for this movie. Do you suggest anybody watch it? Absolutely not. No. What were the most What Terrible was the most movie. egregious sins? The, 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 I just thought it was bad. The pacing was bad. The the writing was bad. The the action scenes were terrible. Hey guys, we're gonna ride our horses over the <laughs> the thing and then we're gonna run away and then some other guy. It's, it was just it was just all super bad. It was just choreographed poorly it was like i said I'd, I'd rather go watch the show down at the excalibur on the strip mm -hmm. yeah it would be way better i'll give and you that it's just it's just not good okay. I, I i felt like sean connery just needed a paycheck it, well i mean he worked for king arthur but he was just in a it was he, just a he, bad he, movie i don't think he did though you don't think he, so he just he phoned at home mm. you know and it was just it was boring it was slow yeah. and richard gear way too was long terrible and <laughs> And Julia, whatever Ormond, Ormond, she's she didn't fit the role to me. Mm. Uh, I, I'd rather watch a. Uh, it, it, it would would have been better if Mel Brooks had. Made it. <laughs> oh, 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 damn. <laughs> you know? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jude, you're pretty much on the same page as me. But uh, do you have any final thoughts? And would you recommend people go watch this? No, I don't. Um, I feel like this is like it's basically like a. Like a Monty Python version of King Arthur, yeah. but without the cleverness or the charm or the humor or any any of the intelligence mm. of those. And it's just like a, it's just bad. Mm. It's not good. Don't didn't, watch it. Didn't hold up. Trust me. Didn't hold up to my memories either. I give it uh, a, a quarter of a, <laughs> a quarter of a sword fight. <laughs> In a scale of 10 sword fights. Okay. That's really bad. <laughs> it's bad. It's bad. It's for, way for a, too For long. a Connery tribute show, we really did. Yeah. Poorly. This is, yeah. 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 You should have seen Jude <laughs> deflate as we were watching. That yeah. Movie. Like she, yeah. She was really excited when we started it. I was like, yeah, let's watch it. First Ooh, night. Yeah, yeah. I'm so excited. It's exactly the same way. And then like. It was it was not long into it, and I was like, "Oh no, <laughs> this is yeah, so she, bad." Yeah, she kept she kept saying, "Like I don't remember it being this bad." <laughs> I'm like, "I do." <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kadish, you got any final thoughts? And what do you give this? As oh, a grade? I'm sure Kadish has several. Well, thoughts. Just, I have to go next, so just keep it. You know, the best part about this movie was Connery's toupee. 
Yeah. Um, you, you know, like I kept telling, good hair I kept telling Jude, I, I was, I was like, how is it that King Arthur's the only one with hairspray? In the kingdom? <laughs> Get that little, he's that, the king, that little poof at the, at the front, at the front. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, like I've never liked this movie. I found it overly long, uh, very indulgent, um, boring. I didn't buy the romance between Arthur and Guinevere or Lancelot and Guinevere. Um, I felt like it would have worked better had they focused more on, um, you know, the, the Arthurian legend as opposed to the Lancelot, um, story, um, overall, like, like the, the movie, it, it feels like a high school play. Like everything is, is <laughs> like all the clothes are, are very clean. They look like they've just been like, you know, freshly washed. Uh, everyone's very clean. Um, nothing holds any weight to it. Like you don't ever feel like, Oh, these people are in danger or there's really anything at stake. Um, you're just kind of going along for the ride. And, um, I'll, I'll note that, uh, the director, um, never did anything after this movie. <laughs> uh, I, th I think he just decided to call it quits after this, but, um, yeah, overall, like it's an okay performance from Connery. Um, but everything else was just like very tedious to get through. I'd give it maybe like two stars. Mm. Yeah. Too I, many stars. <laughs> too, too many stars. <laughs> I, uh, I definitely, when we first suggested this movie, I hadn't seen it since I was a kid and uh, it, 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 I held it in this pedestal uh, in my mind. And then like Jude, when I was watching it, I was like, Oh no. <laughs> I'm like, we have oh, had no. several discussions <laughs> where we've this. realized we're the same person. <laughs> yeah. So this does not surprise me. <laughs> right around the time. I where wish I, I had had you to hold me. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's, okay, <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> we'll get through it together. <laughs> we'll, we'll remember the good times. <laughs> Matt, Kate just stood there like above me with his hands on his hips. Like I told you. I told you. <laughs> suffer. I warned you. Didn't I warn you? <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, it was rough, man. I think. I think I didn't I started realizing just how bad it was when I started seeing Richard Gere just go at Guinevere like ultra hard I'm like yeah, I don't remember it being this weird it's creepy tongue. super creepy yeah. yeah he like charges at her <laughs> and, and, and like hits her with his lips uh -huh. just <laughs> like like full lip impact yeah. so bad his tongue was at an 11 <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, so, but at least she slapped him <laughs> yeah he was doing the same thing with his tongue that he was doing with the sword <laughs> <laughs> That was his move. CGI tongue. That's his move. He's a one trick pony. <laughs> Gear foo. Flips her tongue out oh, of her mouth. So <laughs> She's spins, like, my spins tongue is in that now. <laughs> <laughs> Can you untie my tongue, please? <laughs> Yeah, I think oh, I, I think in the history of movie kisses, that's one of the worst. It's got yeah. it's, it's gotta, gotta be up there. It's gotta be up there. I don't just, watch that many so chick aggressive. Yeah, it's very yeah. aggressive. You know the one where Sean Connery kissed her was kind of gross too. So maybe it's her. <laughs> well he had those he had the, the puckered lips to get past his beard. He's know? like, I don't want to kiss this twelve year old girl. <laughs> <laughs> Connery? Oh come on. I'm old enough to be your grandfather. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I'm as human as the next man. <laughs> I was the next man. <laughs> no! We should have just redone that movie. <laughs> well, I, the only reason I didn't pick uh, uh, Crusades is because we had already done it. Yeah. Should've, we should have picked Entrapment. Oh, I love Entrapment. Maybe Do I hope. I know. know. What, if that one, <laughs> what if that one's bad? <laughs> oh, it, 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 it is. It's got Catherine Zeta Jones and Sean yeah, Connery. I don't know, man. I think it might be bad. <laughs> Are we done? With this? Yes, yes, we're done. Okay. Uh -huh. I, I all right, guys, that, that's it for uh, for first night. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it is what it is. It didn't age well. Um, but uh, before we move on to our next topic, let's take a quick break to uh, listen to some sponsors. For the perfect last minute gift, check out Spa Finder. With Spa Finder, send a relaxing spa treatment straight to their inbox without leaving the house. Gift cards can be redeemed in store at thousands of spas and salons nationwide or online at the Spa Finder Wellness Shop. Spa Finder gift cards contain no fees and never expire, making it a perfect gift you can't go wrong with. Go to spafinder.com slash podcast15 to save 15% or enter the promo code podcast15 at checkout. Let's say Direct Auto could make your auto insurance needs much simpler, like with friendly local agents who want to help you get insurance no matter what. Is that enough to get you to ask for a free quote? Or are you one of those people who need comedy to convince you? We could put in a laugh track. <laughs> or we just stick to having the friendliest, most helpful agents this side of the Mississippi. Or whichever side of the Mississippi fits you best. Call, click, or come by Direct Auto for a free quote and keep driving. Rate savings vary. Terms apply. How you buy can affect price by insurers from the National General Group, Winston & C. 
All right, guys, welcome back. Our next movie on Sean Connery's week list is the original James Bond, Dr. No. Dr. Yes. <laughs> Jude, why don't you tell us what the synopsis is for Dr. No? Okay, so Dr. No from 1962. James Bond, 007, is Britain's top agent and on an exciting mission to solve a mysterious murder of a fellow agent. The task sends him to Jamaica while dodging tarantulas, fire-breathing dragons, and a trio of assassins known as the Three Blind Mice. Bond meets up with the beautiful Honey Ryder and goes face-to-face with the evil Dr. No. Right on. All right, so uh, just right out the gate, I've never seen this movie before. This is my first time watching it. I hadn't either. Me neither. That's crazy. I did not know... So disappointed. I know, right? Like, <laughs> of all the people that have seen this, I, I would have assumed Kadish had. Um, but I have to say that uh, my viewing was spoiled Why? by a terrible human being named Mike Myers. <laughs> <laughs> because I could yeah, there, not. There are so many I Austin could, Powers I could references. not watch this movie without Wait, thinking. what? You couldn't Austin get Austin Powers, Powers out of your head? I could there's not. No, there's no Austin Powers references Dude, in this. everything is Austin what Powers. What are you talking Austin about? Austin Powers references this movie. Yes, sir. That's what I'm saying. That's, but what, that's what we were saying. Because I've never <laughs> seen this movie. I've only ever seen Austin Powers. Like every time they they had this like cool new James Bond thing, I'm like, oh, that's like a that's like a goof. I felt like it gave me a whole new appreciation <laughs> for you, Austin Powers. So I was like, oh, that's clever. Like, oh, they took that. like Doctor Evil how, how is Doctor No. How can you even watch Austin Powers and get half the jokes if you've never seen these old James Bond movies? Because I knew there were spoofs when on he James watched Bond. It, he was dumb. Yeah, but I just I just I'm like okay, so they're just making fun of like spy movies i didn't know it was this oh my god i didn't know it was like this directly tied to yeah. it but like every little like the stupid freaking dragon thing i'm like that's a joke that's a gag <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah doctor <laughs> <laughs> one million dollars yeah. yeah i was just like oh my god they took everything from this movie and it ruined it for me it really did like sean connery as as bond is like top notch really? he's so good he's so good he is the smoothest most classy freaking bond you could possibly put on screen and I love it. I love him for it. And I love this movie. Like, there's a lot of great things about this movie. That, Remember, like, it's 1962. I know. Yeah. I'm not trying to judge it too harshly, but it, it, it is definitely dated. But the things that work really work. Like, oh, this movie is gorgeous oh, it's to beautiful. look at. How much did it cost you okay. to make this movie? So I'm not sure if this is dollars or pounds. It's pounds. Okay. So it's 1962 money. Keep that in mind. But it was 1.1 million pounds. Hmm. <laughs> for the budget, what do you think it made? Uh, first James Bond movie ever. I don't know. Uh, Two million dollars pounds. Five million pounds. Billion. Million. 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 <laughs> Can't do it. Five million. Million. Yeah. Five. Okay. Million, million dollars. <laughs> You're both wrong. It was sixteen. Oh. Wow. Yeah. So in um, modern day money. 1.1 million pounds from 1962 equates to about 8.5 million dollars. Okay. And so it it grossed close to 100 million dollars. Nice. It's in so money. beautiful. The costumes, the sets, the staging. Oh, it's so pretty to look at. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I was just the, uh, very groundwork. enamored the whole time I was watching this and I I'd, I'd never seen a a Bond movie before um like any of them ever. Um Wait. Yeah, I'm not a I'm not a Bond fan. Say that I'm not one, a Bond girl. Say that one more time. I me. have never watched a James Bond movie ever. This is your first this James Bond. This is my Bond? first I'm, James Bond movie. I'm surprised movie. Kadish would even be in the same room with you. What? Oh, I know. have great tits. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 All right. I, I've never watched a James Bond movie pre Timothy Dalton. Okay. So, so like I, I was just never a big fan of like the the 1960s. We're in a room style. of heretics, man. I know, but like. I, Listen, you're the one that's never seen this movie before. Never seen this one. I've seen I'm, I most am of in the a other room one. of heretics. <laughs> but like as I was watching this, I was like, oh my God, I get it now. This is sexy. Yeah. Like it was just, it was gorgeous. It was, it was seductive. It was uh, I loved it. I, other than all the rape, I loved <laughs> this movie. <laughs> in this movie? Yeah. I don't remember anybody being like not willing. Which one wasn't willing? Honey gets raped several times in this movie. What? Raped? What? Yeah. O- off screen. No, no, no. Yeah. Well, yeah. She gets, she tells the story of like her getting raped and then she set the, the Black Widow spider on the guy. Oh, and oh. And then later okay. on when she's at the dinner table with Bond and 
they're like, we'll have the guards take care of her. And James Bond is like, yeah, I got her out of here. This is no place for a woman. And she's like, no, they're going to fucking rape me. <laughs> and it, James Bond doesn't get it until Dr. Mm. No is like, I'm sure the guards will take good care of her. And James Bond is like, no. And they take I her don't... out of the room. And then the next time we see her, she's not wearing pants. They clearly all raped her. I did not get that. I did not get that either. I, they, they sent her to a nice, like the first little, one, nice room. She's chained to a wall and she's not wearing pants. She's wearing the rest of her outfit, but no pants. Huh. And they said, wink, wink, the We're guards take will take care, of, care her. of her. Wow, I didn't get that. Wow, that's dark. Um, no, but the first, the but one. But other than that, I liked it. It's great. <laughs> the, the, the first story that she was telling, like, I thought it was like, oh, cool. She got revenge on that guy. Like, it was a good, like, gotcha, you right. know, a story about it. Like, it wasn't less, like, I was, oh, I'm helpless. Mean, still, I'd rather <laughs> not been raped, well, but right. whatever. But at least you get revenge, you know, like, killed the guy in a very crazy, cool it's way. Black Widow. James Bond movie. Yeah, well, yeah. all the James Bonds are. No, the older ones? Hell yeah, dude. There was one. I can't remember which one it was, but there was one where yeah. they, he went to Japan and I was like, damn, they went there. That's uh, Goldfinger, right? No. no, it was a different one. I can't remember the names of them anymore. There's so In many. In Japan, women come first yeah, and yeah. men come second. <laughs> Something no, like men, that. Men come first. Oh, yeah, sorry, women come sorry, second. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It was that movie, that scene too. But anyway. Men um, come first. Not women, in this house. Women come second or sometimes <laughs> not at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, James Bond, it, uh, like the, just because of the era that it was made, it's not it's not uh, safe for for people these days. <laughs> oh, well, it, it's funny because there All were little poor baby snowflakes. Yeah, yeah, but no, but that's the difference between this movie and First Night is that this is just a, it's a good movie. Yes, it was made in a time where these things were or like not a big deal, whatever. But it's still a worthwhile watch, and you're gonna ask me later if I recommend that people watch it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, it, it, it's funny because there were a number of Asian characters in this movie and they were all played by white people yeah. uh, in Asian makeup. Yeah, that was Dr. No is like well, the, he's half Asian. The actor? Yeah. No, no, the character. Oh, the character. Yeah. But they he's, just they put like the little clay over their eyes to make them. It's just it's super weird. I don't know why they did that kind of stuff, but it's just like, man, it just they sucks. Do that to make him- <laughs> Asian <laughs> studios won't give you any money if you have actual it's, like it just seems so weird to me but I mean I guess again different era so things were different back then but I think uh what the Raiders of the Lost Ark did the same thing with one of the henchmen remember they they had like the the clay over the eyes of one of the henchmen uh in the bar scene when when Indy was rescuing uh uh Marion you remember that I'll show it to you sometime like old movies do this all the time and I never I did I didn't what we call ever seeing a white guy looking like an Asian I'll show you it's there. It's a hundred percent there. Whatever. But anyway, I just always thought it was super weird. Like I never understood why movies did that, but I guess I'm, I'm not of that era. So I'm not really, I'm not informed on the culture of the time. So this was the very first James Bond movie. Um, the, um, the most faithful adaptation of the James Bond character from Ian Fleming's Fleming's books, but it was based off of the sixth book uh, in the James Bond series. So it was it was kind of weird, but they chose to go with Dr. No because it was the most straightforward story. Mm-hmm. And when we first started watching this, I was kind of trepidatious because I, I was like, you know, I'm not a big fan of this era of, of filmmaking. And um, I'd never seen uh, Sean Connery, James Bond. Like to me, like Timothy Dalton was like my first Bond. So like that's kind of what I based. He's like the worst one. <laughs> uh, I, I think Roger Moore is the worst one personally, but. What is wrong with you guys? Not me. Don't look at me, bro. Don't fight. Don't, don't look at me. I don't even want to be here right they now. They are all great in their own way. Yeah. Uh, I have my own list, but it's just my personal preference. There's, I don't understand that mentality. There's good people on both but, sides. But, <laughs> but regardless, like when we start watching this, I, I was like, oh, wow. Like I'm actually like into the story because like it opens up with these like three blind black guys just kind of walking down the street. And they're singing this like weird song and I'm just three like, blind I, mice. And I'm just like, oh no. And then like they straight up murder a guy and put put him in the back of like a car. And I was like, oh yes. Uh, like, like this got interesting. Uh, so like the, the three, cyanide the, cigarette. Yeah, yeah. Like like the three blind mice guys are just like, you know, like actually not blind and they're like super assassins, crazy assassins. Yeah. So I was like, ooh, expectations subverted. And, yeah. and, I'm sure that and, would trigger some people these days too. Nah, who cares? <laughs> and, and the way they introduce Bond in this movie is like really cool. Like they don't show you his face right away. He's at like this card table in a casino. Baccarat table. And uh, he's, you know, playing uh, the, the game against this like rich, like socialite woman. And uh, like you just see his, his hands like to start off with. And then like uh, when he asks her her name, she like, as her name and she's like and, and who are you and he's like Bond, Bond. James Bond James that's when Bond. they like show and then his then she face. gets all tingly yeah. <laughs> 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 
I get it. Bond. Yeah. James Bond. I mean, would, I mean <laughs> it's young but, Sean Connery, man. But, it's yeah. like, oof, the cool thing about With his this, original hair. Yeah. The cool thing about this movie <laughs> is like the first half of it is actually like a really decent like mystery. Like you, you watch James Bond go, to, go about like investigating the disappearance of this MI6 agent in Jamaica and he's doing like actual detective work and he's mm-hmm. doing like cool espionage stuff. And, and I was like, oh, wow, this is like really engaging. Yeah. And, um, y- you know, the introduction to Dr. No, um, there's a scene where this one of his henchmen, uh, a professor, goes to his private island and he goes into th- this room. And it's just an empty room with like a chair, but it's got this like crazy like skylight like oval thing in it. And um, you just hear Dr. No's voice. Yeah. And it's very ominous. And you're just like, oh, this is like, this is, this is fascinating, you know? And then it gets ruined in the third act. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like that, like this movie is half like awesome, like engaging film and then half like super boring. It's, know, it's climax. the third act. Again, I, I blame Mike Myers for this, but the third act, I could not take any of the henchmen seriously and their little bubble wrap freaking <laughs> yeah, costumes. I'm like, Oh my suits. God. Yeah. yeah. The radiation suits, but specifically there was one that he had to fight who had like an airline going into it. So yeah. he just looked a marshmallow man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. Running around. I'm like, what are you doing? Like it, it totally, ruin well, the, the whole fun, the funniest thing is when, when they actually reveal dr no and you realize that uh he has metal no, hands no hands he's got these metal hands and I, 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 jude i was like hey Jarl Varg did <laughs> oh my god they did uh, yeah well, like, that's like, kind of like, where like, Jarl Varg probably got yeah, yeah, their thing yeah if, if if you watched our vi- or listened to our viking episode and and our discussion about Norseman, <laughs> the main bad guy in that got his hands cut off and so he had these metal hands and like it was it's a running with yeah, it's no. a running gag in that tv show and it's hilarious and you're right it totally does but, like but dr no's ultimate downfall is like he couldn't pull himself out of the <laughs> nuclear reactor with his metal hands because he couldn't grip yeah, anything. he couldn't grip anything <laughs> it's so funny dude it's so unintentionally like at the time it was supposed to be taken very seriously like like his metal hands were supposed to be like this like you. ominous thing like he crushed a can with his bare with his metal hands like look how strong my hands are it's my very tough. robotic thing it was just like ooh, he's gonna he's next, gonna next kill time somebody we talk about a, a james bond movie i want to talk to about it with People who actually seen James Bond. <laughs> well, why don't you tell us, like, what is it, what about this movie? Is you? You're a big James Bond fan. I, I'm not a huge James Bond fan. You're, well, you've seen all of them, right? But I've seen them, and you're more least. bigger fans than we are, apparently. So, so, what did you think about this movie? I, I I hadn't seen this movie in a long time, probably 20 years. So it was kind of like watching it again for the first time. Yeah, and um, it's still fun. You know, I just keep thinking to myself, 1962. It's the first one. You know, it's just kind of setting the the precedent for what the other shows kind of built on mm-hmm. as far as the style and, and the pacing and the, you know, just the James Bondness of stuff going forward from there, you know, and you get a touch of the money, penny flirting, you get some stuff with Q and, yep. you know, it's like, there was no like, Hey, here's your big gadget scene. They just give him a new gun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I like that part. You, too. you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, don't use these Berettas anymore or whatever it was. And, Cause you know, they, they don't have enough stopping power. Enough stopping power. Bond's <laughs> like or whatever, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, there was just there was just so much. St- I'm trying to play with the puppy. Here. I know. There's, it's there's very so distracting. Much, there's so much uh, style that they they set up his style so much in this movie, you know. And it's just the the baccarat, the martini, the the gun, the the, the staples of Bond. Yes, it's yeah. it's all there. Yeah, it's and that's it's and that's what's cool about this movie, even. A weird villain in in his fortress of solitude, <laughs> solitude with the nuclear reactor and stuff. And, yeah, you know the, the thing. Is, the I get a little lost when they get to the island, and there's oh, it's the dragon boss. Don't want to be around the dragon. You know, it's like <laughs> okay, whatever. It's like a tank so yeah. with a, yeah, a tank a tank with a flamethrower. Like, what kind of primitive primates These are we dumb running around? It's like yeah, who believes that that's a dragon? A tra- it's, it's, very like, it's, like, okay, it's very superstitious. Okay, it's very superstitious. With with tire tracks. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You, well, Bond called it out right away. Yeah, like he he, he would, like, didn't want to have any of their nonsense. Do you but, feel Vader that you have like a special perspective on it because you're the only one at the table who was alive at 1962? I was not alive. <laughs> this, was, this, this movie's eight years older than me. So. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I, I yeah. feel like uh, this was like the precursor to the action movie one-liners, where Sean Connery would just have, like have these like really witty like mm. one-liners, and I don't think that those were like in movies before this. I think that. You know, like this was kind of like the start of that trend. And yeah. Then like yeah. Schwarzenegger I, I, I get over. a kick out of stuff, you know, because you can tell they didn't have a hundred million dollar set pieces for like, you know, if this was made now, 
the nuclear power plant on the island would be oh yeah way different yeah. instead of you know this instead of they just made it like some kind of like a control room it's, a, it's in a swimming pool <laughs> yeah <It's> like, <laughs> but like, like like the dock with uh, that blew up at the end it's like some coal plant on this side of the island that's probably actually still legit legitimately there you know <laughs> yeah but they just like scouted some areas like hey, what kind of looks like something that would be kind of ominous and Secret Larry Basie, you yeah. know, <laughs> and it's like, okay, well, this looks good, so let's, yeah. let's go well, here. It, it's funny yeah. this this movie contains a scene which is solely responsible for the uh, instantaneous puberty of like half a generation of men. <laughs> the bathing uh, suit, yeah, which is yeah. Uh, Ursula, Ursula Andress as yeah. a Honey Rider coming out of the ocean wearing her um, you know, white bikini outfit, yep. very scandalous with this with this knife was, was, on was the that side. Scandalous in nineteen sixty six. Oh yeah, for oh, sure. For sure. Yeah. And, and there's two piece bikini in a like, movie. Oh, that's a lot of skin. Yeah, and uh, you she's know, it, gorgeous too. It, it, oh yeah, it, it's funny because the producers cast her um, like she didn't audition. They saw <laughs> a, a picture of her with a wet T-shirt, <laughs> and they were like, "Look at those tatas." <laughs> yeah, they they, they pulled her. a Matt Vader. Yeah. They, they were like, Let, "Let's <laughs> cast her." <laughs> and, and, and so, like, she basically got cast because of the size of her breasts. Well, hey, worked out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she was. She, I think she was in Greece with her husband, and she was hanging out with uh, with uh, um, Kurt Douglas. And uh, <laughs> she had just gotten the script and uh, Kurt Douglas was like, hey, let's run some lines on this. And so like they did a couple scenes together. Kurt Douglas playing Bond, of course. And uh, and he was like, I think you should do this movie. And she's like, OK. <laughs> and like all of her, you know, I don't know if you guys picked up on this, but like all the women in this movie have their voices overdubbed with like a different actress. Really? Yeah. No, I did not notice that. What was the reason behind that? Uh, accents. Um, Ursula Andress had like a very heavy accent and they wanted something that was a little, what's her nationality. She's from Greece. I honestly don't know. Yeah. But she's German. I think accents are sexy though. Why wouldn't I was like, unless it was like 1962, sir, unless it was like, like inhibiting the ability to say the lines. Well, even the, um, the actress who played the photographer, she was like Miss Jamaica. She's Um, Swedish. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, she, uh, uh, the actress who played the photographer had like a very heavy accent as well. And so like they overdubbed her voice. Mm. Um, I, I think that was just kind of like what they did back in the sixties. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> the the yeah, photographer they, that they manhandled. I mean, it's never done now. Yeah. That's yeah. Oh, bad. they manhandle it's everybody. Like, in the yeah. It's like, that was pretty cool. It's like he just goes up there and punches her, <laughs> wraps her arm around her neck. It's like, get over here. bitch. And then she like stabs him in the face <laughs> with a light bulb. And, and, and he just like brushes it yeah. off. He, it's like, he's oh, like uh, bleeding. Uh, he's like, Oh, that, that wasn't no thing. Yeah, that was my, kind of funny. Uh, my favorite scene besides the the whole bathing suit coming out of the ocean, which is obviously iconic, but my favorite scene in this movie. And I think it felt the most bond to me was, uh, when he was, he set up his hotel room to look like somebody was sleeping in the bed because he knew that he was going to get betrayed. He's like, mm-hmm. I know what's going on. I'm already on top of this. He one step ahead of the, of the opposition. That was in uh, what's her name's house. Yeah. Yeah. And the dude walks in and shoots the, the pillow set up on the bed and then bond just freaking shut down please <laughs> and he's yeah. just and he sits and it's just a cool little just exchange a cool cucumber <laughs> and, and like unlike most heroes of the day like he actually ended up killing the guy in cold blood oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah well he just was like reaching straight, straight up murdered him he was reaching for his gun but i love the fact that he's like he's like dr smith and weston there's only six <laughs> shots and he, bah, 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 and he just blasts i'm like yeah yeah like like the <laughs> at the time this was made there were so many things that we kind of take for granted right now when we watch movies it's like the the hero is kind of amoral mm-hmm. um you know he's very pragmatic like he has no qualms about killing people that's his job he's a double o um and uh <laughs> you, you know like the sexuality like at the time like this movie was scandalous like yeah. scandal- like uh, there's a scene where he james bond comes back home to his apartment and there's a woman there just in his like button up shirt. The, the lady from the casino. The lady from yeah. the casino. And at the time that, <laughs> that like so many actresses turned down that role because they were like, I can't expose my legs like that. <laughs> I, like, like that type of thing. They show a lot of butt cheek too. That type, of, that type of thing was just not seen. <laughs> yeah. At, I think that's why theaters. like every dude likes to see a woman in their dress shirt. Oh, in the dress shirt thing? And Hell yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a good look. That is a good look. It's yeah, a very but, good look. But we get, uh, we get the quintessent, like Connery kind of sets the stage for all the bonds to come. We got the shaken, not stirred martini. Yep. Mm-hmm. We got the uh, the dapper suits from Seville Row. Oh, the suits are great. Yeah. <laughs> do, do you want to talk about the costumes in this movie? Um, I, I just, I, I think I gushed enough about like how gorgeous everything was to look at, but like just the attention to detail with the costuming, um, like all of the Asian inspired where like, dresses and, and things that the ladies were wearing and then Sean Connery's suits were just impeccable. Yeah. Yeah. Like Connery actually went to Seville Row in London and had like these suits custom made for, for, for him for the movie. 
and the guy who designed the suits, he, he was like, you know, um, he made the suits so that you could like ruffle them. Uh, you could do like, you know, physical activity in them. And then like, once you were done, they would just like kind of naturally go back to being normal. Hide a small gun under yeah, the shoulder. Yeah. And like Connery actually like, he took up a challenge that the tailor gave him. He's like, go home, sleep in your suit, wake up the next morning, see how it looks. And so like he did that, he, mm. he slept in his suit. <laughs> and when he got up out of bed the next morning, like the suit was, it was like almost like freshly pressed. Nice. That's, awesome. That's he, cool. And he was like, Oh, this is nice. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great shoot. Stop it. Great. <laughs> I mean, you can't, you can't, I can't help it. I can't wait till we talk about red October. I'm going to go nuts. <laughs> all right. Cause I, <laughs> uh, all right. Well, yeah, this is like, as one of the first bond movies, we know it's iconic. We know Sean Connery just set the stage. Uh, and let's talk about the, the bond franchise and how it's kind of evolved a little bit. But I, after Daniel Craig's performance as like the brutish, like I'm terrible gonna, bond movies, I, I disagree, but I like they're his, not, but they're not bond movies. They are. They're not. Okay. Well, they're we, we can movies. talk, we can talk about that another time, but <laughs> What I'm going to say the is John Wick movies after yeah, you got me on that one. Uh, after the, the Daniel Craig style of like this brute force, I'm going to kick your butt first and ask questions later. Like I would love for the franchise to kind of go back and kind of like honor the Sean Connery legacy of like this very smooth talking. He's always in a suit. There's only like one time where he's not in a suit and it's when he's on the beach, like the more classy, more intelligent, the more detective style yeah. James Bond. I want them to go back to that because I feel totally. like that's really where this franchise kind of like shines. You can, of course, kind of modernize it and make it a little bit more action oriented. But like, I think they went too far in that direction after like Pierce Brosnan and, and Daniel Craig. I think they need to dial it back a little yeah, bit. I think you make a good point because I think like growing up my um, like the trailers and things that I saw for James Bond were starting at Pierce Bronson. Brosnan. Brosnan, yeah. Um, so that's kind of like what I knew of James Bond. So I was never really interested in just seeing an action movie. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, like this, this kind of like spy, spy action movie. But like watching this for the podcast, I was so very charmed by it's it. It's very different. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Very different back then. And like even the action in this movie, like, you know, you kind of look at it now and you're just like, ah, whatever. But at the time it was like very like raw and like real and like in your face, like, like audiences hadn't seen this type of action before where like guys are like, looks like they're actually punching each other and they're flipping each other like yeah. over their shoulders and Got some you know, Krav like, Maga going on. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, like there's a scene where like after, um, bond or, um, so like his driver is like a, one of Dr. No's agents and he ends up you know, killing himself rather than letting Bond interrogate him. So Bond puts his body in the car and drives yeah. it to the hotel <laughs> and he leaves the car with a valet and, and he points to the dead body. He's like, make sure he doesn't run off. <laughs> and he like walks outside uh, and like the valet's just like, huh? <laughs> he's like, he's looking at <laughs> okay, him. Okay, Mr. Bond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a great, it's a great movie. It's a lot of fun. It's, it's a lot of fun to see where the Bond franchise kind of got its start. But, but you know, it's funny because like after we watched this movie, like we, both Jude and I were like kind of, so taken with it that we went down a bit of a bond rabbit hole. We oh, watched, did you? We watched cool. uh, from Russia with love and Goldfinger. Nice. And it's funny. Cause like in Goldfinger, the opening scene, like he's in this woman's bathroom where she's like, you know, just gotten out of the shower and he's like getting ready to, you she know, steps get, out of get, the shower, like fully made up yeah. with like a winged <laughs> eyeliner. Yeah. Awesome. He's, he's getting ready to get with her and he sees the reflection of an assassin in, in her eye. And so like as the assassin comes up behind him with a billy club to like hit him over the head, he just turns around and uses her as a human shield. <laughs> and the guy just clocks the woman <laughs> right across the head. Like she was in on it. She set him up. But at the same time, it's like he he, he might not have known that. <laughs> He's just <laughs> using her. And like Jude and I were both like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what was uh, the, there was this one character. She was the assistant to the professor who was one of Dr. No's agents in, in the movie. And her job was to kind of seduce Bond and keep him at her apartment long enough yeah, for the yeah. professor to come and assassinate him. And she was wearing this like weird like towel dress. Like she had just gotten out of the shower. <laughs> I was and in love with that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Dude, like, like, I'm like, going to get one of those. <laughs> like, 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 you know, how normally like one like, Is that a dress? Is that a towel? <laughs> it, Where can that? I find that? Yeah. It's a drobe. Well, that's like <laughs> in Goldfinger, the first time we see Sean Connery as Bond is when he comes out and he's in that like towel onesie that has like short shorts, but it, it's a, it looks like a towel. Yeah. We should all be wearing these. I'm down. <laughs> Let's bring it back. <laughs> I need a terry cloth dress. <laughs> Stat. All right, we'll get on it. Patreons, <laughs> get on it. Yeah, J join Jude's OnlyFans. If you can afford it. 
<laughs> all right. Let's do final thoughts. And uh, if we, I think we all recommend this movie to sure. our listeners, yeah. but uh, final thoughts on, uh, on Dr. No, Matt Vader. Oh, it's classic. Had a great time watching this movie. Right on. Nice it's, to uh, revisit it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like I said, I hadn't seen it for decades. Mm. Right so, on. I mean, I think I'm going to probably try to find some time to watch some other Bond movies. Yeah. You know, I, I grew up with Roger Moore, so I like my Bond a little more gadgety, but it's really cool to go back and watch where the Bond movies start mm-hmm. and the influence that it gives yeah. out and stuff for sure. I'll say for my th- final thoughts is I really sincerely wish I had never seen Austin Powers first. Oh, dude, I love Austin Powers. I love Austin Powers too, and I they, think we they, should they, probably they, dedicate one. They're, week. they're like a secret shame movie. They're, they're, I, I watched the whole franchise at least uh, once Alex, a year. Alex, wait till you see um, From Russia with Love and Goldfinger. Because, <laughs> I've seen be, Goldfinger be, be, because, like, they're like I was telling Jude after I watched From <laughs> Russia with Love. I, I was, I was like, you have like these characters in, in From <laughs> Russia Mr. with Love called called um, Number Three and Number Five. Oh my god! <laughs> and, and then you have the, this Russian woman. <laughs> Who is basically like Fraulein? I want to hump a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, she, she's like the the like she's even got the writing crop that uh, you know oh, the, the, the yeah. one from Austin Powers. I sincerely wish that I could just take that <laughs> section of memory out so I can enjoy these Bond movies without constantly yeah. being so reminded of. Let me ask of you Austin this question: Powers. So you got these two little ones at home? Yeah, yeah. That you're gonna have to be a cool dad and introduce them to James Bond someday. Yes. So what order are you gonna do that in? <laughs> um. Okay. So. Just on my personal level, <laughs> I grew up with Pierce Brosnan. Uh-huh. Pierce Brosnan was my James Bond growing up. And then later on, I explored the other actors. I think, honestly, I would probably start with Sean Connery and then skip the other two and go to Pierce Brosnan. Because <laughs> I do not care about you Roger Moore. Moon, you got to throw a Moonraker in there. <laughs> I don't the, care about the other Roger three, Moore. The other three. There's three don't, of them. Don't forget Lazenby. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, I would probably skip that that genre, the 70s genre of Bond <laughs> movies, because I can't stand those ones. Well, your, your kids are going to grow up with either Tom Hardy or Tom Hiddleston uh, yeah. as Bond. Yeah. I hope it's Tom Hiddleston, but. Yeah, I'll probably start with Sean Connery, get them down, get down to the basics and then let them explore the rest of them. But that would be right. my that would be my uh, direction to go. Uh, Jude, what are your final thoughts on Dr. No? Um, I give it a four out of five cyanide cigarettes. Ooh, and uh, I, I really <laughs> liked it. I'm, I'm surprised at how much I liked it. I was not looking forward to watching it. I thought it was going to be boring. I was way more. Oh, this is was, this was my favorite of the three movies we watched for right this on. week. Very cool. Boring and old. Yeah, <laughs> that that is always the worry when you go I back know. to the sixties and you're like, it, it's always funny watching um, movies with Jude because like she just geeks out over like the things that like you wouldn't think <laughs> to geek out over. And I'm sure I'm, I'm the same way with her. But like she'll be watching, she'll be like. Oh my God, those shoes. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Well, what yeah, movie yeah, did like, you like? Look at that suit, those cuffs. Ooh. <laughs> my wife's the same way. I was very um, mesmerized by Sean Connery's cuffs of, nice. his, of his suit. Yeah. Right. I need to get one of those like Chinese Asian inspired with the collar. And it, yeah. Yeah. That'd be kind of dope. The lady, the lady wear? No, the, the one that Sean wore. Do you need yeah. some metal hands? Yeah, <laughs> you should, dude. Oh, I wish I should. We should have done this for Halloween, but you you should have dressed up like the freaking the cow from the Norseman with the metal maybe, hands. Maybe next year we'll be a little bit bigger and we can sponsor like a a Viking themed costume party. party. I'm down. Let's do it. <laughs> cool. All right, uh, Kadish, what are your final thoughts on Doctor No? So I was pleasantly surprised at how much I enjoyed this movie. Um, the third act is definitely like very boring, uh, even though it's supposed to be the most action packed part of the movie. Um, but, uh, I actually fell asleep during the third act. So oh. I, had to, I had to go back and rewatch it. How dare you? Um, but, um, the, 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 the first two acts of this movie are actually like really good. And that's when he's doing all of his investigating and, you know, we're getting the espionage and the flirting and, you know, just bond being bond and kind of setting the stage for the character for decades to come. And I can see why Connery is so many people's favorite version of bond because like he just nails it. I know that when they were trying to cast him, um, Ian Fleming didn't like the idea of Sean Connery because he, like he was a nobody at the time and he had just done Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and uh, <laughs> the uh, producer Albert R. Broccoli, he had his wife go watch that movie and he was like, do you think he's sexy? And his wife was like, oh yeah. <laughs> and so he was like, okay, I guess we'll cast him. And so like that was basically how he got cast is because the producer's wife wanted to bang him. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, uh, but, but I mean like they cast Ursula Andress based off of her, her boobies. So, so sexism all around. 
Good. Uh, well, it was it was j- just <laughs> like they you know like they wanted to go for like a sex appeal type. Yeah, thing. for sure. And the road the yeah. road for getting Bond to the big screen was actually like a very long winding difficult road for yeah. them because they had a, a lot of stops and starts. They had a lot of rights issues with the books. Originally, they were going to do Thunderball first, and it was a situation where um, the rights were split up, and so it was involved in a lot of legal battles. Uh, but eventually they were able to work it all out and get the, this movie made. And that launched like one of the biggest movie franchises ever. So um, like I, you know, having watched the other two movies that came after this, I'm like, yeah, you know, like I can see why this was so popular, but the other two movies do have that problem where like half the movie is really awesome. The other half is really boring. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I would definitely recommend if people haven't seen this movie before, or haven't seen it in a long time. Yeah, definitely check it out. It, it's a fun watch. It's, it's very much of the time it was made. But it's also extremely enjoyable and fun mm-hmm. for the most part. I think so, it holds up. Yeah, I'd give it uh, three and a half out of five martinis. Nice. <laughs> Chicken, not stirred. Exactly. Vodka. Vodka. With a lemon peel. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for listening to our review of Dr. No. I highly suggest you go check it out. Before we move on to our last movie, a quick word from our sponsors. Present you is burnt out at your current job, but future you works at Geico and future you is also a beekeeper. Me? I don't even go outside. Well, with Geico, you got a consistent schedule. So you are now one with nature, my friend. So I've become a bee person? Technically an apiarist. And yes, you also got a competitive salary, so you had the funds to start a new hobby. All right. Give me that honey. (laughs) Virginia Beach. Start your future at Geico. We're hiring claim sales and service agents. Apply online today at geico.job slash Virginia Beach. Let's say Direct Auto could make your auto insurance needs much simpler, like with friendly local agents who want to help you get insurance no matter what. Is that enough to get you to ask for a free quote? Or are you one of those people who need comedy to convince you? We could put in a laugh track. (laughs) Or we just stick to having the friendliest, most helpful agents this side of the Mississippi. Or whichever side of the Mississippi fits you best. Call, click, or come by Direct Auto for a free quote and keep driving. Rate savings vary. Terms apply. How you buy can affect price by insurers from the National General Group, Winston NC. All right, welcome back, everybody. Hey, real quick, if you want to support the podcast, go to saltynerdstore.com. There we have all of our merch. We've got some cool T-shirts. You can make stickers. You can make face masks, uh, magnets, all kinds of cool stuff available there well, with all original designs um, for the podcast that have some inside jokes, and they've got some cool little movie references if you're into movies as much as we are. And also, shout out to the Red 5 Network. We stole a couple of their designs and threw them in our store, too. So if you want to support us and the podcast, uh, go to saltynerdstore.com. Red five. Red five for life. For life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. The last movie and me and Kadish's favorite movie. One of my uh, favorite, yeah. yeah, is uh The Hunt for Red October. And uh do you want to do the synopsis for this? Or you want to let Jude do it since let Jude? Jude? All right, Jude. Why job. don't you tell us what uh The Hunt for Red October is all about? Okay. The Hunt for Red October came out in 1990, but it's set in 1984. So in November of 1984, the Soviet Union's best submarine captain in their newest sub violates orders and heads for the U.S. Is he trying to defect to the U.S. or is he starting a war? I have such fond memories of this movie, and I'm so glad that it still holds up. <laughs> it, it because, does. It really does. Because yeah. I, you and I are probably going to have work. Oh, um, my father and I used to watch this movie together, and it's just like so you've seen it before. Oh yeah, okay. a ton of t- yeah. This is like a yearly watch. Am I the for only me. one who's never seen this before? This yes. is your first time, yeah. apparently. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I had to. I got through the first like 30, 40 minutes of it, and I was so not into it. I made Kate sh- restart it because you guys were all gushing over it <laughs> on Twitter, and I was oh. like. There's something I'm not getting yeah. here. We need to start it over. She got about halfway, th- uh, about three minutes through and fell asleep. And then the next day when she was fully awake, uh, we started over from the beginning. Yeah, because I was like, not only did I fall asleep, but like even up until then, I was just so bored. Huh. I needed to like rewatch it. And even then, I we kept pausing it and, and I kept having to be like, all right, Does it let me a- see if I'm if I'm – following this appropriately it's just like so much you have to pay attention to and so much you have to just like be really invested in to follow along the story otherwise you have no idea what's going on and that's how i felt Mm. like watching this i was just like i don't know that i care that much to be like okay this is going on here and this is what's going on here and the thing that he said that means this and the fucking accents (laughs) i mean it's I didn't love this. No, no. Oh, dude, I mean, I it was fine. You're, you're not and the I was target just, audience. 
I'm I, I'm very this not. Is like, yeah. I, I love the, the the things that you don't like about it are the things that I love about it. All yeah. the, it's like a big chess match. This is this is a dude movie. Oh yeah, and it's like the Cold War very era. Much so I was gonna yeah. say that. Every 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 move that the movie kind of explains to you what's going on. That's all a, a move in the chessboard, yeah. and everything eventually just collides at the at the climax of the film when they're when they're going up against the russian sub it's just like it's such a freaking awesome fun movie to kind of just tackle in that sort of way i think i get why you guys like it i just didn't feel the same way about it like Hmm. it's a great movie it just wasn't for me you didn't like the accents? I thought the accents were on point i I was just it just took me out of it because it was just like these people oh and i and like the first and the initial watch i was like wait He's he's Russian, right? Yeah, and he's Russian too. See, they and did. He's the, Russian. Did you miss the transition? No, I, yeah, the transition I was saw great. that, but it still took me out of it. This is that same transition because they were all different accents. It wasn't like this is in English <laughs> cast. <laughs> this is all yeah, British and Scottish guys playing yeah, Russian. Yeah, Russian it wasn't like it was a it was a, like a Scottish cast or or an English cast playing Russians where I could just be like, okay. Just transition that in your head. These are all Russian people. It was just like, he's American, he's British, he's Scottish, but they're all Russians. <laughs> they, they, they totally, it totally, was really, it was They totally do the, uh, the Star Wars thing where all the bad dudes are, are British. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just, and I, then I was like, am I really supposed to be rooting against these guys? Because they're kind of likable. Which ones? The Russians. Well, no, you're supposed to be rooting for them. They're, they're, they're good. By they're the good end, guys. I figured that out, but I had to really pay attention. <laughs> like the entire command crew is, is defecting. Yeah, except, I got it. except for I got except it. for Tim and Curry I, and in the I and re- the guy that gets killed. Dude, I, I ended up really liking <laughs> Sam Neill, and then they killed him. Yeah, Sam yeah. Neill was awesome in this movie. I thought that was the only reason he, this guy liked probably liked this movie because Sam like, Neill. Oh god, the Jurassic Park guys. In this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> no, dude, I grew up with this movie. It, it's it's freaking up there in my like top ten easily of my of my I movie watching. Really would have liked to have seen Montana. Oh, <laughs> what a heartbreaking Maybe I line! Need two wives. What a heartbreaking line. Uh, no, I just, I freaking love this movie. I love the chess piece aspect yeah. of it. Of like a, uh, uh, watching Jack Ryan, uh, uh, Alec Baldwin as Jack Ryan, like go to in front of these generals. And he's like, we have, we got word that this Russian, uh, this Russian submarine guy has taken like Russia's number one top, like, like ma- weapon of mass destruction. And he's run away with it. And yeah. they're all under the ins- assumption that like, he's going to come here and he's going to start a war. And he's like, going against the orders of the USSR and all this crazy stuff. And Jack Ryan's the only one who's like, no, he's going to defect. And he's like, he's so excited about this. He's the only one who knows it. Nobody believes him. And he's like, I got three days to prove this before they kill this guy. And it's just like, it sets the, hit your ride on a helicopter. Dude, to the sub. It sets, it sets such a fun pace for this yeah. movie where you're just I like, used, is used, he going to get there in time? Is everything going to happen? Yeah. Or are they going to destroy the ship? Are they going to save it? Like what? Like, it's, I love I, this I have to personally, put my disdain for current Alec Baldwin oh. on, the, on the back burner <laughs> to watch this movie now. You know what? I don't really, s- but, I don't, but, I don't see Alec Baldwin uh, in yeah, this character. He's, yeah. it very much fits that he's for Jack sure. Ryan. Cause he's a, sure. it's a young baby faced, you know, Alec Baldwin. Uh-huh. It's like, this is his first major movie. Like this is before he was yeah. crazy. I mean, he was probably still an idiot back then, <laughs> but you know, it's, 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 it's fine. No, I, I, I think he did really well as Jack Ryan. I know Jack Ryan, the character, the Tom Clancy character has been played by there tons, so many, so many good actors in this movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. I, um, I was shocked. I, every time I watch this, we watch this movie, I'm like, oh, that guy was in this movie and this dude was in this movie and Darth Vader's in this movie <laughs> and then the, ins- the, the the congressman insurance salesman guy's in this movie. Oh, did you see and- Sven? <laughs> yes. His personal, close and personal Sven, friend, Sven. Sven oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was the Russian dude on the bridge mm-hmm, with the... Yeah. From the Running Man, he, yeah, yeah, he's uh, he he was also in Predator, and, yeah. Uh, you know, he's he's one of those guys like you instantly recognize him by by his face. No, I will admit, this watching of this movie was probably the first time I've noticed Sven <laughs> in particular <laughs> in this movie because of this show that we're doing yeah. now. It's like, oh, there's Sven, yeah. there he is. It's like, that's pretty cool. Do you remember our our conversation during week two of Schwarzenegger, uh, September, where we talked about his action movies? And in The Running Man, he uh, Sven Thor- Thorson plays a character named Sven, Sven Thorson. Thorson yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and like and the, his very la- the only line I think he has in that movie is at the end where he's like, "I'm going to go get some steroids." <laughs> <laughs> just, just like leave. He's like yeah. the security guard for. This, uh, this is the only movie I've ever watched 
where I like re- feel like kind of patriotic and want to sing the Russian national anthem. <laughs> Let them sing. You sing. When, when the sing. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's like, that's a catchy song. Yeah, it's catchy. What yeah. did you What did you hear, Jonesy? I think I heard singing, yeah. sir. Yeah, yeah. And then Sean, I, God. Every yeah. freaking line Courtney in this movie, <laughs> every line in this movie is so quotable to me. So many good me. quotes, yeah. Dude, absolutely. I I was like, I was quoting movie as I was watching it. You like, killed us all, you arrogant <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> something like that. This goddamn cook. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just, it, everything about this movie is something that I love. I don't think there's any part of it that I don't like. I, it's it's <laughs> such a fun, nostalgic watch, yeah. but I'm going to I'm gonna gush too much. Uh, Kadish, why don't you tell, oh, did you want to, what's up? The budget for this movie was thirty million dollars. <laughs> made a, it made five billion dollars, <laughs> Jude. <laughs> five it's still making billion? money. Five billion dollars. <laughs> Vader, how much did this movie make? Oh, what was the budget? Thirty million. Thirty. Uh, Eighty-five, ninety, something around there. Hundred thirty, hundred ninety. Up higher than that. Two hundred and fifty million. Oh, two hundred million! <laughs> two hundred million dollars. <laughs> Playing the prices right, man, man. higher, lower, higher, lower, higher, higher. Lower. Yeah. First try, Vader got on the first try. Yeah, yeah. And, and this movie was just as long as first night was, oh. and so much better. It doesn't seem. It like doesn't it. seem like it. No. I watched it. I watched it with commercials last night, and it seemed shorter. Wow, with the first night. I really need you to stop watching things with commercials well, in them. Okay, full disclosure here. Right? <laughs> it's like I've seen this movie twenty times. I could talk about this movie easily without having seen it. And uh, it was just one of those weird weekends where I, time kind of ran away with me. And um, it took me forever to get through first night. Mm. I mean, six hours of my day mm. from the time I started it until the time I finally I get watched it. it. I For get real, because we left the house, went to dinner. And came back and I, I was like, I'm going to turn this stupid movie back on. I was like, okay, fine. And then it was like 1030 at night. I'm like, I'm going to go to bed early. I'll just fake it with this <laughs> show. <right? laughs> so, <laughs> I'll watch a YouTube video in the morning or something. And um, I go to bed and I turn the TV on. I'm kind of flipping through channels. And lo and behold, on the Sundance channel, Hunt for Red October started five minutes ago. It's like, okay, I guess I'm supposed to watch this movie. Again. <laughs> it was meant to be. So yeah, here it is. Yeah. Right so on. I was fine. It was it was cool. I, I enjoyed I just stayed up a little later. Yeah. yeah. I have a special place in my yeah, heart Kate, for this movie. Spill your beans, man. What's uh, what's um, so special about this movie for you? Well, the first time I saw it, um, my entire family, we were at we were on vacation at Virginia Beach. And we were in this like, you know, this hotel hotel uh, right on the beach. And uh, it had like a TV with a VCR in it. And so like we went out and we rented a copy of Hunt for Red October. And uh, I don't know if you guys remember that, but the VHS copies of this movie were all red. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, like, I think I have one at home. So. Yeah. It was, it was like super special. Like we were like, oh, a red VHS. Tape? Nice. Wow. <laughs> and um, like I'd never really known anything about Tom Clancy. And, you know, I, I was still pretty young. And I think this movie was PG. Um, so like my parents were like, oh, this is something the kids could watch. And we really want to watch this. So like uh, we all watched it together, my whole family in this like hotel room in Virginia Beach. And I just remember like just being fascinated by this movie because my dad was in the military. Mm -hmm. And so like, you know, seeing like a military thriller that wasn't like a war movie was something like completely new to me. And and I was just like, like like you talked about the, the, the chess aspect of it where all these different pieces are being moved around and there's all this like intrigue and it's so it's very complicated like if we were to actually sit down and break down this movie Mm -hmm. in each moving part it would probably take the whole podcast to do it it's very intricate and and this was the first tom clancy book adapted to a a movie the first time the jack ryan character you know is portrayed on screen and this is also the first instance of what became known as the techno thriller genre which is basically uh you know thrillers using like you know technology that hasn't been previously like you know popularized or whatever and uh you know the this actually got me like fascinated with submarines like Mm -hmm. i I became like a huge like kind of like submarine addict after this where (laughs) i think half the country did yeah after this movie yeah like like, and i got into tom clancy novels because of this movie i've said it on the podcast before that john mctiernan has made three perfect movies in his career uh predator uh die hard and this movie And, uh, you know, like this is a movie you can watch it like a million times and be just as impressed and entertained on the millionth viewing as you are in the first because it's that good. Yep. And, um, you know, like it's kind of funny because, um, John McTiernan and Alec Baldwin did not go on to do any of the future Jack Ryan movies, 
uh, after this movie, um, Harrison Ford took over. And they originally wanted Harrison Ford for this movie, but he, he wanted too much money. And so when it came time to do Patriot Games, uh, Alec Baldwin was like, I want more money. And they were like, for that amount of money, we can get Harrison Ford. <laughs> and, and they were like, wait, we can get Harrison Ford for that amount of money. So like when Alec Baldwin didn't back down, uh, they, they just went and offered the same amount of money that Alec Baldwin wanted to Harrison Ford because he was a bigger star. <laughs> and Harrison Ford was like, yeah, okay. So that's, that's great. That's, a, that's interesting. That's kind of, I, I don't dislike the Harrison Ford movies either. I, I no, I think, yeah, most how of the time. Can I ask how many people have played Jack Ryan? Four. Four. Yeah. So we got John Krasinski is the newest mm-hmm. one. He's got the Amazon oh, Prime. Oh, that makes it five. Oh, he's the fifth? Yeah. Because you had Chris Pine and that one Jack oh, Ryan. Oh, that's movie. right. Yeah. yeah. Which one was that? I actually uh, haven't seen sh- Shadow something or other. Shadow Nation. Shadow Nation. It came out around the same time that Mission Impossible 4 did. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't think I've seen that. I don't think I have yeah, either. Ben Affleck. Yeah. Some of all fears. Yep. And Harrison Ford. And then you had Alec Baldwin. Yeah. And, and now okay. we have now John, John, John Krasinski. Krasinski. I remember okay. this this movie inspired a lot of uh, really boring but kind of fun in a weird way c- computer games. Oh, oh yeah. 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 I, I, yeah. I played the Red October video game where it was yeah. like a submarine simulator. Right. I didn't know I that. I played the same thing on a Commodore 64. Wow. It was really hard. <laughs> it was. It was very hard. I, I had sunk constantly. So, I had no idea there was a video basically, game. Basically, you know, like you know, they show the thing where the, with the with the torpedo. Yeah, yeah. And you're just like, the submarine is like moving this way and the torpedo goes and shoots. And it's like, that's the game. That's except, it, huh? Except you're calculating, all, like when they go on the trench run. Yeah. And they're calculating the time and the distance to turn and all this kind of stuff. And that's, that's all on this game. Dude. <laughs> that's crazy. And, and you're like, your brains were great. 15 seconds. 12. <laughs> turn now. Hard to port. 30 degrees. Blah, blah. I, you know, I it's, actually it's, think this is one of um, Sean Connery's like greatest roles. Oh, he's amazing. Because like the, the character he plays, Marco Ramius. The thing I love about, about this movie is like, in every scene he's in, people are always questioning him and, uh-huh. and being being like, "You're crazy! I don't want to do it." Like they're resisting him. <laughs> Doesn't even and, phase and, him. And, and he's always like, "Right." Yeah. You know, he, he, even when they have like uh, um, the the other captain, um, oh, played by Scott Glenn Mancuso, Captain yeah. Mancuso, he, uh, you know, when he's on the Red October at the end, and Ramius is telling Ryan to turn into the t- torpedo, and uh, he's Mancuso, like, "You're crazy!" Yeah, Man- Mancuso's like, "He's going to get us all killed," and Ryan chooses to listen to Ramius because he, he knows the guy and he knows how brilliant he is. And when it's revealed that, you know, they turn into the, the torpedo to close the distance before it had a chance to arm. And so like, it just, you know, kind of bounced off the sub. Um, everyone's like, Oh, like that was smart. Yeah. <laughs> and Ramius is just like, I know. Um, That's awesome. But, but, but yeah, I like, wrote the book. <laughs> yeah. Like, like they, Oh, that was funny too. When uh, he was asking, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I got to get this out before I forget. Cause he, he just meant, remembered me, remembered me. You just reminded me yeah. uh, that scene where he's like, what, what kind of bike books do you write? And he's like, Oh, I write uh, uh, nautical books for the CIA. And he's yeah. like, what book is it? And he's, he na- rambled off the title. And he's like, oh, that book was terrible. <laughs> I, know, I know this book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Admiral Halsey yeah. from World War II. And he's like, Halsey acted stupidly. <laughs> I love that. Ra- yeah. Ramius, like Sean Connery is Ramius is such a freaking awesome character. Yeah. But like in every scene he's in, he's challenged by something yep. and he overcomes that challenge either you know, j- just through his brilliance. Yeah. Through the use or, of his mind. Unless he just has to straight up murder. Someone. Dude, he slipped on his <laughs> tea. And that whole freaking thing where he that just was, assassinates. That, that dude. And it's so weird because that character that he killed is named Putin. <laughs> yeah. I was, okay. I was legit going to ask you guys. I is was that wondering like a, about that. Is that a legit reference? Like they killed Putin in this no movie? Because he's a political no, no, officer. No, this was way before Putin kind of rose to power like well no I, not in power but he's always like putin the actual person I, I has think, always been in, i think that's a fairly common name in russia maybe it's so like john had, was had russian collapsed not this yet. Point yet no this is so this is like, like prime right there right? Well, yeah. well when the movie came out the year before is when the soviet union had collapsed okay and a lot of people didn't want to make this movie because they thought it was outdated, but they're right. like, no, 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 this is set in 84. Even right. Sean Connery, when he first got the script, he's like, this movie doesn't make any sense. This doesn't, this isn't what's happening right now. And, and they forgot to tell him it was a period. Yeah. Piece. They, <laughs> yeah. They've never told him that they took place in a, in a previous time, but yeah, this is like height of the cold war, like Russia, I USSR. Don't know if you can count six years ago as a previous time, like a period piece. Well, it's like a it, major. It's, well, it's from six years ago. So it's a period piece. Well, 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 well they, had, they had to put that whole opening on explaining like the year that it took place in. No, be, I get Because it. other people, yeah. you know, they just wanted to make it clear to the audience that this wasn't like current time. But like yeah. reading it on paper before you see the movie, I was even just like, 
okay, it came out in 90, but it's set in 84. That's weird. Well, they had well, a Cold War, and then yeah. it wasn't Cold War. But so. After I saw it, yeah. I was just like, oh, okay, it makes sense. Well, but yeah. I'm sure, like, if you get the script for this and you're like, okay, that's, that's why. Ex- that's exactly what yeah. Sean Connery thought. Yeah. He was like, why are we doing I, this movie? I mean, it was set in the year that the book was set in. Yeah. Um, but the thing, the cool, interesting thing about this movie is, you know, it's a John McTiernan film, and, and he reteamed with Jan de Bont, who as a cinematographer, who he did Die Hard with. And Jan de Bont went on to, you know, make a bunch of terrible movies as a director. Um, but um, the uh, did you guys ever hear the story about, like, how Sean Connery threw his weight around on set? No. For this no. movie? Yeah. I, I haven't really ever dived into the behind the scenes stuff because I feel like it'll shatter the uh, the illusion. Yeah, of- don't, don't ruin this movie. <laughs> don't, don't ruin Sean Connery for the boys. <laughs> no, no, this is actually kind of a funny story. All right, go ahead. Um, so, like, Sean Connery was kind of, like, at the height of his, you know, power in, in Hollywood and stuff like that, his clout. Uh, around the, the the early 90s late 80s and um you know when he was cast in this movie uh you know Mc, mctiernan had never really worked with him before uh, and connery kind of came on set and you know would throw his weight around a little bit and one of the things that he did was you know sean connery uh for those of you who don't know um after his first two bond movies he had to start implementing a toupee because he was you know losing his hair and so uh for whatever reason, Connery got it in his head that he wanted his character to have a ponytail. And so he had this toupee made where like he had like this, like, you know, kind of six inch ponytail, like, you know, hanging out the back. And of course, like a Russian sub commander would not have that. So McTiernan <laughs> was, was, was just like, Sean, like you have to get rid of the ponytail. And he's like, no. <laughs> and oh, I, I, I don't know why, like Connery was just insistent on having this ponytail. And, because and, I want it, but I have to say it's for a character. <laughs> and, 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 and Connery had gone around McTiernan's back to the producers and just said like, hey, I'm going to have a ponytail. This is how it is. And um, so McTiernan was k- kind of pissed off about it. So he went to uh, his his crew and told them, was like, hey, guys, when we're watching like you know, playback, um, just make fun of Connery's hair. <laughs> and, and, and so like they started making fun of uh, like by, by saying that it looked like Connery had like a dick hanging off the back what? of his head. <laughs> wow. like, oh, like, my like, God. Like, like, they, they were like, oh, look, the, the flaccid head dick. <laughs> and, and like Connery ended up like hearing about like these jokes of people laughing at him. And he was like. He was like, I gotta get rid of this ponytail. <laughs> <laughs> so like, so like he he gets rid he gets a new toupee, and um, they had to like go back and reshoot everything they'd already shot with like the old toupee to get rid of like the yeah the, the, the I would pony, like to see some of those guys. yeah where's yeah. those that, where's that footage? But it, but it ended up costing them like twenty thousand dollars to go back and like reshoot all the scenes. Nice. And so like uh, they, they used to joke that. Uh, Connery's toupee in this movie cost twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> well, kind of did. <laughs> kind of did. Um, there's a couple it of was things. A good toupee though. Looked yeah. Good. There's a couple of things I wanted to talk about, like just about Sean Connery himself in this movie. His he's such a presence, and I, oh, yeah. I love the like you were talking about how like everybody questions him at at one point in time during the movie, and he just is like so steadfast in his decision making and his character. And I love the idea that like he's just like this rock wall when it comes to his officers and what his rules are. And then when he gets into a room with his first mate with uh, with uh, Sam Neill, you kind of see him like drop the wall a little bit and mm-hmm. he starts having fun. Like he's actually friends with this person. Mm-hmm. It's not just like a captain and officer relationship with, like with the rest of the guys. I love that that real subtle change in his, his demeanor when when they close the door and it's just them two. I freaking love it. But my my all time favorite, uh, besides the whole like th- some things don't react to your bullets, like that's obviously a hilarious and awesome line. But my favorite line is when they're having dinner with the officers and they're like, why did you why did you tell them we were going to defect like that? That's just they're just going to send everybody after us. And he's like, he's chewing on his steak. I love <laughs> the way Sean Connery eats. I was going to I was going to say like that scene where he's eating is the most fascinating thing so I've ever funny. seen. It's funny. It's awesome. He's like, like, like the way his lips move. Yes, exactly. And he's like so weird. When when Cortez reached the new world, <laughs> he burned his ships and as a result, his men were well motivated. And That's I'm right. like Oh, he's freaking badass. <laughs> but you know what? He could have just said that he did that. Like, he didn't have to actually do it. Yeah. It was amazing. I, like that, that's when I, I do like that scene where the premier guy, like, gets the letter. Oh, yeah. And he drops his coffee. Yeah. Like, oh, shit. Yeah, it's, it's, it's his like, wife's <laughs> uncle. Dude, the, the, like, the very, like, the very subtle plot line about uh, Ramius's wife and why he defected. Like if you're not really, really paying attention, you kind of miss that. But the reason I got why he wanted to defect after he realized what red October was and what it meant for the, for the Russian government, it was like this massive weapon of destruction. That's just going to murder millions of people. It it doesn't outright tell you, but I'm pretty sure the KGB murdered his wife for political reasons. And he, 
is I, defecting on Russia because of that. Because I, he, I never he says on at one point idea. in time when they're talking with when he's talking with Sam Neill, he says like, uh, I I murdered her the minute I married her. Like as soon as I got involved with her, she was dead. And and it, he kind of maybe felt it's, maybe it's spelled out more in the book. He something. felt yeah, really in, guilty about it. In so, the book, basically, uh, she dies while he's at sea, but she dies because of the failed Soviet uh, medical system. Oh, okay. And, and he comes to realize that um, that communism is detrimental to oh. to society, and so he chooses to leave communism behind and, and go to America. Okay. And, okay. And it's all because that the the communist system failed his wife. Okay. I see. I got a Makes little bit sense. more nefarious of a reason in my head when I was watching the movie. I always thought it was just like they for political well, for leverage. I feel like they they killed his wife. There's plenty of people out there that didn't read the book. Yeah. Like me. So. <laughs> Anyway, I thought I, it was cool. I never felt like they really needed to explain it all that no. much. No, they didn't the need to. It was just one of those fun little things, like a little headcanon thing for me. Like, sure. what's his motivation? Why is he doing this? Well, like, my, oh, the, I wanted motivation. the same thing and just assumed that I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> it's very subtle. It's in there. I, my, his motivation to me has always been that he didn't want America. <laughs> no, no. It's, it's like you said at the end. It's like this, 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 this. There's too much power with the submarine. Yeah, for one country to have, and it's like. It's just too much. The, the thing I like about this movie, like we get so many movies nowadays that are very convoluted, like movies like, you know, Batman versus Superman and <laughs> Justice League. And, you know, um, like, for instance, uh, what was that? Uh, Jupiter Ascending. Oh, yeah. 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 Like, 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 like like movies that writers don't know how to handle, like multiple plot threads and, and you know, like a very heavy story. If you look at this movie, like like this is a dense movie. Oh, yeah. But you're never overwhelmed by it like it's handled so freaking well every scene leads into the next scene you've got the the people on the russian sub you've got the people on the american sub you got jack ryan doing his thing and it's able to balance all these different storylines in a way where like they're all given enough weight you're never really i'm not speaking for jude on this you're never really confused about anything <laughs> um you know like like if you're paying attention to the movie you get it and yeah. everything makes sense and everything is really well structured. Russians don't take a dump son, without having a plan. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, and, and it's so rare to find a movie like this nowadays where like the writing is so sophisticated and the filmmaking it, it does it justice and yeah. the, the cast just fires on all cylinders and like everything about this movie is just masterful in yeah. my opinion. And, and honestly, yeah. like I know we, we kind of bash on people who, who, translate books to movies and they fail mm -hmm. at it. Like how could the source material is right freaking there? How yeah. do you not do it? Like if anybody's ever read Tom Clancy movie, the dude can spend three chapters talking about like a pencil. Yeah. It's insane. The amount of detail that he goes into in his books. So I honestly give them a lot of credit for being able to break it down into a digestible, like two hour movie. Cause those books are freaking dense. Yeah. It's hard. The guy who wrote the screenplay to this movie was the chief of the boat on the Dallas. Uh, the, oh, the, nice. The guy who does the Pacanini story. Yeah. 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 Jonesy is a cool character too. I wish we should and, um, <laughs> you know, Vader Gates McFadden, um, plays, um, Jack Ryan's wife. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Dr. Dr. Crusher, Dr. Beverly Crusher. Yep, she's in there. And, and basically she took this role, um, because like she had just left, um, next generation and her role was actually supposed to be much bigger, but they, they cut it down. So like, she's just in like one scene. Yeah. It's the opening. Um, but she was supposed to, you know, kind of continue that role in future movies. And when it came time to, uh, do, um, Patriot games, She'd gotten her role back on Next Generation, so she couldn't do it. Oh, <laughs> so like she, she, she's like in literally like one scene in the Tom. I think she's okay. Yeah, she, she, she did. She'll right. be fine. Uh, all right, let's do final thoughts. I think we could do a whole podcast about this movie because I love Probably. it so much. But Sean Connery is freaking awesome, and this is it, one of it'd be one of those cool shows to like read the book and, and like compare the book and really break it down. Yeah. Sounds like when I'd have a super amount of fun. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a me and Kadish exclusive. Yeah. Um, okay, so. <laughs> Uh, let's do final thoughts on uh, Red October. Obviously, for me, it's just one of the all-time favorite movies. And uh, it, Sean Connery is just... What, what's your favorite movie. line? Sean Connery line? Oh, gosh. Movie. There's so many to choose from. Uh, he slipped on his tea. Uh, there's that <laughs> one. There's the Cortez line we did. There's, of course, uh, some things in here. Don't react well. I, I, I said, <laughs> you choose your favorite. No, there's so many. Uh, there's, uh, I think, it's got to be the freaking rock and roll one where he's he's talking about... He's <laughs> he's announcing... Go down to Havana. Yeah. And the guys are all freaking out. It, it's just, there's so many good lines, but I think, I think that one where he's addressing his crew and he's like, once again, we'll play our dangerous game. Like that, that whole se sequence, I, I like, his I like whole speech. Whole, I like the whole let them sing. Yeah. Scene. Let uh, them sing. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. It's just awesome. Uh, so yeah, highly recommended. 
all time favorite Sean Connery movie, Rod October. Uh, Kadish, what are your final thoughts on this? I think my favorite line, other than the obvious ones, is uh, we need to find a real buckaroo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a five star movie, in my opinion. This is one of those movies I can watch it anytime and just be enamored with it as much as I was the first time I saw it. It's a movie that never gets old. It's a movie that doesn't really uh, age. Like I, I feel like even the special effects, like they didn't like they use some digital effects. It's not saving anything for me. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to mention like the, the whole like submarine battle thing went, Shut up. <laughs> is, is very like Star Trek. esque. Well, well, like that's it, what they modeled Star Trek. Yeah, off it was, of. it was all done with models, but like the underwater effects were, you know, nothing was shot underwater in this. No. Like all the underwater effects were like kind of, on the cusp of like the digital revolution. They st- it still looks great. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, like this movie hasn't aged at all in my opinion. Cause, no. Cause like it, it, you know, it's a period piece. It's set in 1984. It looks like it's set in 1984 and you just kind of accept everything that kind of goes along with it. And because of that, like it just, it has a timeless quality to it. And I just, you know, every time I watch this movie, I'm just like so entertained. I love it. I, I understand it more and more as I get older. Mm-hmm. And um, it just enhances the experience of watching this movie. Connery, I, I feel like this is like his seminal role, at least in my mind. Like whenever I think of Sean Connery, I think of this movie. Yep. Uh, also, um, Jack Ryan. I always wondered why, um, you know, um, Alec Baldwin never returned because, you know, he was my first exposure to Jack Ryan. I was like, that's my Jack Ryan. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so like when, when Ford took over, I wasn't necessarily as big of a fan. I never really bought Ford. Ford. Yeah. He's too much of a leading man. Jack Ryan. Well, he was too much of an action guy. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I agree with you. I like, I always thought the thing that made Alec Baldwin stand out was he was a real thinking man. And the, the way that the characterization came about where you find out about like how he broke his back and like how he had learned to walk. And now he's like an analyst and he's not really fit to like be out in the field and stuff like that. And he had to overcome his fear of flying and, blah, blah, blah. Like, like there's just so much character development in this movie, not, not just for Jack Ryan, but also for like all the other characters. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the thriller aspect of it is like so good. Um, I just can't say enough great things. About yeah. This movie. yeah. We're I gushing. Love, I love this movie. <laughs> Jude's about to fall asleep. Uh, Jude, what are your final thoughts on the hunt for of October? I just feel like I should abstain. <laughs> This is not for me. Not your movie. There's nothing wrong with this movie. I'm not I'm not going to say like, oh, it sucked or it was boring. It was just like my take on it is that I was bored because I wasn't invested in it at all. So would you give it, it another chance? Would you watch it again to kind of like. I want it so long. <laughs> it's fine. And I appreciate what it is, but it, I I know me and I know what I like. And this isn't it. It's not your game. Yeah. It's it. a it's a good movie. Me and you. Like for you. Yeah. Yeah. Technically, it's a good movie. Yeah, um, and, it, and I think it looks good. It's just not for me. I will say one of the coolest things that this movie did was the the vocal transition where they went from Russian to Yep. I thought that was brilliant. English. Yeah, like like the best way that they could have possibly handled it. And they tried to do that in Eaters of the Dead or, or I mean, the 13th, 13th Warrior. Warrior yeah. Um, and I don't feel like it it had like the same Which like, is effect. another really long I don't know, I've always movie. liked that transition too, though. But it's a, it's a very smart way of showing yeah. the audience that we're we're but translating what mm-hmm. we're talking I, I, about. I do know there was a lot of controversy when they were filming that. Where basically they said like, okay, we we don't want everyone to be, have to be speaking their lines in Russian and to subtitle it the entire movie. Um, so we're gonna have them speak in English. But the real controversy was, do we have them do it in Russian accents or should we just have them do it in their regular like voice? And so McTiernan made the call to like, okay, look, I don't want my actors. Like I want to get the best performance out of my actors. So I don't want them to have to like put on a fake accent. So I would rather that they just use their normal voices once we transition to English. And I, you know, I know it kind of bothered Jude, but like, I think it worked. No, I appreciate that they acknowledged that they were like doing this and making a stand on it. Like, here's how we're going about this. And this is our choice. I appreciate that. Did, I'm just saying overall, it wasn't for me. Didn't Sam Neill have a, just a slight Russian accent throughout the whole he, thing? He might have done it, but I think for like Tim Curry. Neil, yeah, Tim like, Curry. He's like, oh. hello, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tim Curry didn't even bother, but I, I felt the whole, like point of having two missile keys <laughs> is so that told, no one man may arm the missile. <laughs> <laughs> I will try to forget your comments in my report. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All go. right. Vader, what did you think about this movie? Final well, thoughts. Well, I think you guys kind of covered it. Yeah. <laughs> is it's it not it, the greatest it's, thing it's, ever? It's, it's not the, well, yeah, it's not the greatest thing ever, but it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's pretty good. Um, 
The greatest De- thing ever is called Hard Target. Well, that's called. <laughs> it's called technically it's starring called Jean Claude Van Damme no. and his mullet. Yeah, I, I got to go with Jude on this one. It's called <laughs> Raiders of the Lost Ark, and everything else is wrong. Okay. <laughs> but no, but this is a this is a good movie. And All right, I'm always going to enjoy this movie, and I'm gonna. Yeah, it's just it's like Kate just said. I could watch this movie a hundred more times, and I'm going to enjoy it a hundred more times. Yeah, it's good stuff. All right, guys. Well, that covers uh, Sean Connery week. May he rest in peace. Uh, brilliant actor and iconic uh, man of cinema. So uh, that was our little tribute to him, even though me and Jude kind of picked an odd one for this, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was by uh, it was by nostalgia. Not well, necessarily. Cool, we don't have we got, to do we got, Alex we got a Trebek. bad one and a classic one mm-hmm. and our favorite one. Yeah. We don't have to do Alex Trebek week next week, do we? No, no. no he's not we're an just actor. Gonna, you're just going to watch. I'll take Sean of, uh, Connery movies for a thousand, Alex. <laughs> Shuck at <Okay>. Trebek. <laughs> um, episodes of Jeopardy. Yeah, no, we don't. What are your do three favorite episodes of Jeopardy? I never watched the show. I don't know. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, if you guys want to support this podcast, go to saltynerdclub.com. Uh, join our patreon there you get exclusive podcasts we get blooper reels uh, behind the scenes photos of our new mascot and uh, a couple other cool little perks that you guys get and uh, we really appreciate it any money that goes uh, towards the podcast goes towards new gear or uh, getting us set up so that we can do uh, better shows and expand uh, the brand so uh, consider helping us out go to saltynerdclub.com we really appreciate it all right uh, sometimes i just need a cup of coffee yeah (laughs) Uh, and a carb (laughs) Before we head out to where can, we, where can we find everybody on the podcast? Vader, you want to talk so much. Go ahead. I want to talk so much. I'm just joking. Go ahead. What's up? Where can people find you on the socials? Uh, at Matt Vader 74 for uh, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, yeah. Instagram, everywhere. Parlor. Parlor. Oh yeah. I set yeah, up a parlor too. I'm firing the parlor up a little we're, bit more. We're getting our, our um, life, our life vest ready for Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and there'll be other things. And I'll, I'll announce them all on stuff. Okay. Right on. Yeah. Jude, where can they find you and the adorable pictures of your dog? You can find us at I am Jude Juju on Instagram and Twitter. Right on. You, you can definitely tell Jude has a puppy now. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> hey, everybody, look at my puppy. <laughs> I got a puppy. Stop hating. Here's my she's, she's 30th, still in the- 30th picture this week of my puppy. <laughs> she's in I'm, the honeymoon I'm, yeah, honeymoon phase. You're welcome. So, but I'm the, guy, I'm the guy with a cat, cat'stagram, right? So. <laughs> Which I follow your cat and I like I all your cat pictures and you throw uh, so much shade at me. And my <laughs> You're such a jerk. Stupid okay. dog. We like dogs. Meanwhile, you can't see it, but Vader has been like scooping up the dog and playing with it frequently throughout our dogs. recording today. I love dogs. I love animals. All right. Katie, where can they dogs find you? Dogs are stupid as he's playing with the dog. He's cute. He's pretty cool. You can find me at Matthew Kadish, K-A-D-I-S-H on Twitter and Parlor. And uh, you can also um, check out my books on Amazon by going to kadishbooks.com. All right. And I am the Salty Nerd, your host. You can find me at Salty underscore nerd on Twitter. One ping only. One ping only. All right, guys. Thanks very much. Have a great one. Want to hear something amazing? Discover matches all the cash back you earn on your credit card at the end of your first year, automatically, dollar for dollar, with no limit on how much you can earn. Extra cash? Come on, how amazing is that? In fact, it's even more amazing when you realize all the places where Discover is accepted. 99% of places in the U.S. that take credit cards. So when it comes to Discover, get used to hearing yes more often. Learn more at discover.com slash yes. 2020 Nielsen Report limitations apply. Let's say Direct Auto could make your auto insurance needs much simpler, like with friendly local agents who want to help you get insurance no matter what. Is that enough to get you to ask for a free quote? Or are you one of those people who need comedy to convince you? We could put in a laugh track. (laughs) Or we just stick to having the friendliest, most helpful agents this side of the Mississippi. Or whichever side of the Mississippi fits you best. Call, click, or come by Direct Auto for a free quote and keep driving. Rate savings vary. Terms apply. How you buy can affect price by insurers from the National General Group, Winston & C.